is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp. And today I'm going to show you step by step, and I mean really broken down step by step, how to paint this gorgeous 16 by 20 landscape. This is a road leading into an open meadow and series of fields and hills surrounded by white cosmo. This uh, particular painting, we were going to teach a bunch of times on the mic is my husband, John. Hi. He helps me bring you these lessons to you uh, live, usually step by step. Um, this one we've been trying to bring to you, trying to bring to you, had to postpone, had to reschedule, had to postpone. <laughs> it's been a journey getting it to you, but it's finally here and it absolutely is as promised. This is one you're going to love to have on your wall. I don't think I've ever worked so hard painting a road mm. ever. Um, this will have traceables and mini books. Give us a little bit of time to get those on the website, but they are imminently coming out as your resource. It even got a country western song in the middle. Uh, there was, uh, I did my head made up a country and western song that was not very good in the middle of this so you have that to look forward to <laughs> this is a big boy and um we definitely made some changes this road took some twists and some turns along the way of this lesson so uh give yourself some time know that this is a bigger lesson this is more three who we're going to be covering so many techniques in this painting it's going to be like it's like an art course right here in and of itself so uh there's really nothing to do but get your paint, get your brushes, and come back and let me show you how you can paint this for yourself at home. Let's go. So here we are back at the easel with a few really important changes. You'll notice that we've got an awesome bar over here. This is going to let you see what's happening in the palette without getting motion sickness and also make sure that you have a picture in picture in a convenient place the whole time. We really listen to your suggestions. I love the feedback from this acrylic April. So you're going to see a lot of new teaching techniques, methods, and information that you haven't seen before. Because when you guys let me know something will help you, I work on it and I figure out how to incorporate it in the lesson. Don't I, John? You do. I'm on about it all the time. So you're going to be seeing some of that. Today I'm working on a 16 by 20. I have a T-square so I know some layout information. But I will. you could just use a regular ruler. You don't have to have the fancy T-square. I have the wish or intention that you and everyone you love have blue skies. I love the wishes and intentions because I think they help. Now, over here on the palette, let's go take a look at the palette. It's a little bit different, and you're going to notice I have gloss glazing liquid. This product is the slow down the drying time of my paint and extend it. It just gives me a little more time since I'm not uh, over by my humidifier and everything. I have ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and a little bit of this glazing liquid. I have phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and again, Glazing liquid, that's not white. I have titanium white, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and a little glazing liquid, and titanium white in the center. And you say to yourself, wah! This is because I'm going to show you how to break down the values of the sky and how those colors work with each other to create this whole amazing skyscape that you're seeing in the thumbnail. It really is that simple. Let me show you how you mix them up. Okay, so we have about one to one of the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue. And when we mix those two together, we're going to get a gray, right? Just a nice little gray that we can use in our sky. If our gray is too brown, guess how we fix it? Hmm. More blue. And I feel like that's a little too brown, so I'm going to put in one more blue. I was shy when I put out the ultramarine. So that's how you can tell if you've got that mixture correct, all right? We've got it right here. There we go. And it's okay to have a good amount of it because we're going to use this stuff up. I'm using a tool called an artist knife to mix these together. You can do this in small amounts with your brush. Little micro mixes. We just want you guys to see that. So let's look at this. I'm going to take this over here to here and I'm going to show you the color. That's how dark it should be. Do you see it? Yeah. All right. That's that color that you're trying to get to. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to mix my phthalo blue, my ultramarine blue. This is the top of the sky. There's no white. That was the glazing liquid to slow down the drying time of my paint. If you don't have it, then you don't have to add it to the mixture. If you have it, it will make it easier for you. It does absolutely aid in the making of your painting. I've got a little paper towel here to clean off my knife. And I do try to clean it between mixes because I don't want to add color unintentionally. So mix these two together with their glazing liquid. And then I'm going to come over to the white and we're going to make 
a mid-tone white. I mean a mid-tone blue. That was a silly thing. Mid-tone blue. All right. So let's look at both of those up on the board. So this is our top of the sky blue. And this is our mid-tone blue. Those are colors you're trying to get to. You're going to have one more that you get into the white here. It's going to be light. And I can always put out more white on my palette if I need it. Right? I'm going to scoot this out here. It doesn't need to be there. Sometimes you'll drip. Drip, drip, drip. Drip, drip. That's a lot lighter, isn't it? Yeah. So here we go. We're going to look at it. Those are your values. Now you'll have white, right? You'll add white to this color. You might, you know, tint, tone, shade. Those things are going to happen, but those are the ranges of colors that you're trying to get. Put out some white on your palette. We'll put this aside for later, right? Because remember, we have mini books, we have traceables, we have resources. So this information all goes into the mini book. So if it's hard for you to retain it during the video, don't worry. We have it written down. Mm -hmm. And we do that because everybody learns differently. I'm going to put out a little more titanium white. Here we go. So I've got my white out. This is my sky. This is the basis of things that I'm going to be doing. I'll rinse my little palette knife because I don't want it to get messy like you do. I like to put it between paper towels. It's a good way to get it preeminently clean before I go into a big thing. So here we are. Deep breath. Six inches down from the top. That's what my T-square is about. I'm going to take a, oh gosh, hard to get anymore, but one of my cat's tongue brushes. And let's make a little mark with our gray. About six inches from the top. We know that everything above that's going to be sky. Right, and I'm going to come across here, and I'm just going to very lightly kind of sketch in what I know is my landscape. Coming over from the right, just a little bit higher than what I'm doing over on the left. It's very dry brushed, isn't it? Yeah. All right, not too big. Now, while my brush is wet, I'll go ahead and take my wish for you guys, put it into the sky. I chose blue watercolor pencil for my wish just because, you know, it's not going to hurt you guys. You know, we're not going to worry about sketching in anything else right now. Let's focus on sky. Let's break it down into a micro bit. All right, big brushes. Right now, you're going to want a bigger brush. I'm going to use a tool called a mister, so I'm going to get a big brush. This is a kind that you buy, like, at a hardware store. I'm going to mist this a little bit. I'm just misting it because my environment is dry. And guess what else I'm going to do? Pull down my screen so I don't <laughs> splatter my art. Now here in the bottom, right, I get this very lightly wet. I'm going to load it up. All right, load up, up my brush. And here at the bottom of my sky, I'm going to come in with that light value. Looks pretty good. Sometimes, again, I might mist just to make sure that I've got good blendability. That looks pretty good. I'm going to wipe off on my paper towel and come get a little of my mid-tone blue. That looks pretty good, right? Yeah. Take that up to the top. I'm going to come over where my light blue is and just so lightly brush. Look how lightly I'm brushing. I don't have a ton of paint on here. I'm lightly brushing. Sometimes I put a little angle on it. It's kind of a blend. I haven't even gotten the second brush for blending yet, right? Now I'm going to rinse this out a little bit and wipe it off on a towel or paper towel, right? To get the color out. Come over to my dark color. Everything's still wet. 
I'm at the top of my canvas with the dark color. This is my dark summer sky color. Now I can come across here and blend. If you're having any trouble getting that blend with the big brush, what do you do? You grab a dry soft brush and you blend it. I wipe off extra paint when I'm blending. We have a little control. Look at that. If I need to get this brush wet or damp, I just use my mister. I'm showing you guys some new techniques. Look at that go. Take a bit in here, I might get in there. So I got it a little more damp. And I will wipe off and get into my midtone where it's getting overly dark, right? Rinse out, wipe off. It's just damp now. So as it starts to dry, or if my brush gets overloaded, my blending brush gets overloaded with pigment, right? I'm controlling those things. Back at the base of the sky, right? This is a one inch oval mop brush. We've been using it all acrylic April. This is really kind of what they're for. And you do this until you have a beautiful glowing ombre. A glowing ombre. A glowing ombre. Right? This is your perfect sky day. Perfect day in the sky. You have control over that. As opposed to the weather. Which you have no control over, Especially as I've been here. seeing lately. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I control my mess using a paper towel, right? I'm rinsing out. I control my water by how deep I'm dipping my brush in. And I control having the color changes that I need by pre-mixing them. Now, for the next step, I'm going to want to dry my canvas, okay? So this is a whole step. I'm going to want to rinse out any of my brushes that I used before the next step so that the paint doesn't dry on them and they stay in good condition. When we come back, I'm going to show you the next part of painting this gorgeous summer day. So the next step, we're going to put in some distant wispy clouds. These are clouds that are maybe in the higher atmosphere. They're a little bit like like little brushes, little little moments. I'm going to show you how to get that in. Um, I want to demonstrate the stroke to you before we do it. And I'm going to demonstrate it with a dark color, but we're actually going to do it with a light color. Um, so let's grab our scratch board again. This is completely dry now, just so you guys know. And let's say we take our, our hog brush. This is a uh, 20 uh, Artigny by Raphael Hog Round. And I'll just use my dark color here. All right. In these wispy clouds, what I'm going to be doing on the sky with my white is, look at the load of this. It's so light. I'm going to be making soft curve motions. Can you see that? Yeah. That's kind of how those strokes are done. It's a very soft thing. I can always come back with the glaze if I need to. Right? Sometimes we will also dance the brush, if you want to see, on the toe. Make little bits of story here. Little bits of story. That's all we're trying to do. So I know with a curve, if I were to have too much paint and press hard, this is all I'd get. Right? That wouldn't work for me. I've got to be here. Dancey, 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 dance. So that's what you're going to be doing when we put in the wispy clots. Different color, of course, because they're far away and they're white. I'm going to rinse this out. Now, whenever I get my um, hog brush good and wet, I like to make sure the moisture is out of it so that um, it doesn't drip all over my canvas. That's important. I've got my gray here, and I've got my white, and I'm going to add just a little bit of this gray to the white and maybe smidge of that blue up there. So we're not changing the colors. We're just working them together.
There's the load. Focusing sort of centrally here. Let's paint in a series of distant white little faraway clouds. Notice my pressure is light. My paint isn't heavy. These are, we barely see them. They're barely see them. Mm. <laughs> now, sometimes they'll be more visible. But when you pair these with, like, say, cumulus clouds that we're so familiar with, sometimes I will have to get my brush wet a little bit. When you pair them with cumulus, what will happen is the sky will start to have some depth. So we've got this nice ombre. The sky is getting some depth going. It's just gorgeous. As I go down in the sky, I might have to lighten my uh, color into the white just so that it's, you know, a little more visible. Barely, barely adding water. These are very distant, aren't they? So the distant thoughts of a faraway cloud. The earth just sent to think about it. This is a little river floating around in the sky. Listen to the way the brush sounds on the canvas. Now, don't get too in your head if you can just breathe in and breathe out. Press lightly and just listen to the brush dancing. Come down here like very much on the toe. Look at that, just dancey dance. Little bank. Look at this, we did a little bank. Almost in the white, you know, and just on the toe. I love doing these. You can come over some that you already have with a brighter white. Because just like your cumulus, these have shading too. You know, you've got time to make it work. You don't have to solve everything in one sitting. You know, these lessons come out to you guys in one sitting. But you could take five or six sittings to do a painting like this. You know, it's true. If it takes me three or four hours, it wouldn't be unreasonable for you to double or triple that amount of time in your expectations of planning a painting. One, because just following along will slow you down, right? That's, that process of learning is a little bit slower. Um, it is for me, too, just so you know. When I have to follow a lesson or a class or instruction, I slow down. Oh, look at this. Isn't this just looking wonderful? Oh, that is. They just look real. And you'll notice I use that paper towel to control my water. I'm putting more of that gray over here. It's light, but it's in there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. A lot of that will get covered up with cumulus, but the essence of it sort of peeks out, and I like to make sure that it is, you know, peeking out. It's those layers. It's the layers. The ogres and the clouds need their layers. And the parfaits. And the parfaits need a layer. I find a parfait without problem. layers is just, well, a cup of yogurt. So, <laughs> Or granola. Or granola. Could be a cup of granola. Or just a cup of berries. But I would be actually pretty excited about a cup of berries. So that wouldn't be that disappointing to me. I, how is it said? Berries and cream. Berries and cream. I want some berries and cream. I think that's how it goes. All your teenagers just scream, no, the trend is over. <laughs> It ended the minute you did it, Mom. <laughs> it killed it. We were all having so much fun, and then you did it too, and now it's dead. It's dead to us. Dead in our souls. <laughs> we do not sing of it anymore. <laughs> How awesome it is to ruin a meme. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's all I do to my job is I just ruin their memes.
but the clouds remain. Look at these clouds dancing. Okay, so the cloud Look at over these on the clouds left. Dancing. See those clouds on the left that have the dimensional layers to them? Uh -huh. How did you do that? Well, you know, you come here and you add a little bit of gray, right? Get a little gray into the mix. They just instantly. It's the value. When we have value. So it's the laying of the dark to light. It does. Even even these far away ones can have some value. You can come back and add a little. Because it went from just sort of a flat background to whoop, there's clouds whoop. here. There's a lot happening here now, isn't there? Just a lot. I like to rinse out every once in a while and work out my brush. Get a little bit of a, you know, I still have some, it's not white, white, but, you know, I have some color in it. Dancing on the toe. Toe means this part of the brush. You know, and think about it. We, we looked at those brush strokes at the beginning, didn't we? Did. We saw them. We understand what they are. So those are little changes you guys have been talking about, like getting more into the color mix, maybe, on some of those colors where we're using a lot of a color family. Notice I'm going to come down here and I kind of bank some of these clouds that are going to be behind the mountains. Mm. And I like to get some of these. These are like just the wispies for sure. They're airy, but maybe they're a little brighter. You're not going to be sorry that you played with it, and you're not going to be sorry that you gave it your time and your attention. Don't rush it. Be mindful. Be now. <laughs> well, that's such a big thing to say in such a small way. Be mindful. Just do it. Just do it. Well, all you would do to do that is just mute my volume. <laughs> just mute me, and you'll be mindful. <laughs> and just... Listen to the brush on the canvas. Not our brush, your brush. You could listen to our brush too. Mirror neurons are working brush. right. If you're just watching, know that you are learning. Mirror neurons are firing. That's true. Adding another little layer to some of these just to give them some. They're wispy, sure. But they have they have mass, they have form. Oh, look at that. What a lovely little distant layer but you did so good now dry this thoroughly make sure your paint isn't drying out on you and we're going to come back and start adding some fluffy clouds and we're going to have so much fun with it We have a bit of a lovely day started, but we want to put some more kind of fluffy, traditional clouds than what we think. But clouds aren't just cotton balls. They're not just little round shapes. I'm going to show you again with a darker color than we're going to use, but just so you can kind of understand where we're going. I'm going to keep heading out with this brush. But now we're going to be looking to make forms that have particular shape. And I want you to pay attention to how I'm working this line. You guys see this? Yeah. All right. I'm not making, I'm not going circle, circle, circle. That's not what I'm doing. I'm pushing and using my brush to create the irregular. You see if I can peek over your left shoulder. Okay. Regular. I'll just stand back. Regular little shapes. Now, on the bottoms of these, I will definitely be blending and shading, and they might work out here. We might even come in with little bits of these round. This is a number 12 select round blender by Princeton. And we may come in and work parts of the clouds with little, see this little stroke? That's how light I'm working it. Barely, right? Yeah. Not a lot of moisture, not a lot going on. What are we going to be doing? Top of the cloud will be light, bottom of the cloud will be dark. When we create that, the cloud will start to take dimension and we're going to also be having them in perspective so they like little train tracks you'll be seeing the bottoms of them as they go into the distance so hopefully that puts into your mind what we're going to be doing in this step i'm going to go ahead and get this brush 
clean so I can start. And I don't start with my, um, oh no, guess who came to visit? Mm. It's a Twix visit. <gasps> Breaking the step. <laughs> Sorry, guys. She just had to say hello. Mm hmm. He does, you too. He loves her loves. She loves her loves. And she doesn't care what we're doing when it's loves time. Sorry, Kate, because they're feeling jealous. She's a lot to pick up. <laughs> she's a bit of a chunker. <laughs> For a little dog, because she's got a lot going on. But she is feeling like, she's like, wait, how are you getting pets? All right. Oof. Is that short, Kate? All right. You two go on and play. All right. Back to the thing. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes your pets, you know, come in and visit. So, again, I'm going to take a, oh, maybe even a little bit of my darker blue over here. And look at that kind of steely gray I'm getting. I don't want anything that dark. Right. So I'll, I'm going to show you where it is at. I'm in this color here. And I'm going to, you missed this. I don't know if you missed a camera switch. Because uh, I picked up the thing and made a swatch. I'm going to come into here. Did you see the swatch? I think I saw it. And come in and get kind of, let's start with, it's not our darkest color we're going to have on the cloud, and it's not our lightest color. See where we're at? Yeah. Not our darkest, not our lightest. Somewhere in there. Because we, we'll call it our middle range of cloud. Mid-swatch. Mid-swatch. And we're going to say, begin in the distance here. A far away little, little embankment. Now it's curving around the lens of the earth there. So we see it in the distance. Wait, you're saying the earth is round? I am claiming that the earth is round. <laughs> I'm not claiming it, I'm just acknowledging the facts. Gravity works. I didn't prove it, I just took, you know, earth based science in school and remembered what they told me. You can see I'm just using this brush to push up little shapes, aren't I? Because these banks are layered in the way that they are, right, we almost have to capture one top line, you know, and then shade through all the rest of the lines. Because there isn't really any blue sky that's going to show through here. Hmm. But the blue will tone the cloud. Or is it, is that right, tone? Well, it definitely is because where the paint is, you know, say transparent and I'm just kind of filling this in, right? And we'll just push out a little bit here as we push out. That looks pretty good. You know, if I had darker gray, you know, perhaps there'd be a cloud bottom here. They will layer up in steps. So I can add a little bit of the shadow of a bottom of a cloud there. We're doing clouds in perspective today, John. I know. Su super serious business. Perspective. So we're going to add the bottom of a cloud, say, here. They're kind of flatter. It's interesting. Bottoms of clouds are not... They're very flat. They often have like a atmospheric pressure pushing up on them. What is your? So I'm just kind of layering it out and saying to myself, "There's some clouds layering up here." What, babe? Yeah, it was just it was like, what is Mr. Cloud's perspective? Uh, fairly vertical one, I would think. So as we go here, we can always get into the white and get a lighter color. Just kind of work in between here. And this is, you know, be coming out on the toe of the brush. Not taking away my not taking away anything from the clouds that are there. 
And I might even come here and add a little highlight there along that atmosphere. So dark, 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 dark. Where we see dark, there's a bottom of a cloud. And because they're layered in front of each other, they're stacked in front of each other, you don't really see every cloud that you see the bottom of. And then we also have some really cool sort of uh, forward clouds that we'll be putting in, but we've got to get these guys on. Back into our dark, dark. And I can make it darker, 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 can I? Just by adding more of that. I'm going to layer that up. I'm brushing this up. Sort of a... Little brush start there. See, it's like flicking up. Yeah. I'm liking the scratch paper. I hope it explains things. I think it does. I think it's helpful. Imagine we will be adding them to the mini books. <laughs> Just getting the underside of these little sky travelers. They're just little sky travelers. They can make long Involved journeys, can't they? Just working the dark shadows here. Sometimes we even have like little puffs that come up. Yeah. Pretty dark too. And that's a interesting thing to have to sort of work with. It's the dark in the cloud. Oh, the cloud has so much shadow. It gives so much shade. Actually, on some landscapes, if you do them big sky enough, there'll be shadows on the ground you've got to paint. That's kind of cool. Yeah. If you're like, I'm painting the American plains. And sometimes Carpathian mountains. Those things are likely true. Well, that's looking not terrible. Look at that go. Our grays are getting in there. It's a good idea to rinse out on occasion. I'm going to get into my light color here. And I'm going to touch the tops of the puffs. See how we're capturing the tops of the puffs? Yeah. Look at that. That's looking pretty good. Add some bright highlights here with the toe of the brush. And you can work the gray back in. Oh, goodness, look at that go. Paint in the sky today. We've got it. We know what we're doing. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Sometimes I will, even though I'm on a wet palette, even mist my paint just to make sure that I'm good on my flow. Let's come in here and add some little highlights, maybe, that we're seeing. Not everything on every cloud, right? Hmm. <sighs> 
capturing the top Very of the cloud. Sky. Little wiggles. You know, and sometimes I will switch over on these bigger clouds. Let me kind of get this to the number 12 Princeton Round Blender. Look at that. A little bit of light color at the top. Look at the load. It's not heavy. Pressure's light. We showed you that stroke at the beginning, didn't we? The way we would lightly come along and help bring these clouds into development. We're not painting little round cotton balls. We could. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Style, it's a, it's an effect. I got a little much paint on there, so I just rinse out. The style, it's an effect. What's great about these brushes is they kind of put out paint and blend at the same time. Got to control my paint and my water. Come back in and blend that there. Look at that. So cloud-like. What a tool. I wish I'd known about these tools early, early in my painting days. See, we all learn. We never stop learning. Never stop discovering. Always controlling the water, though. I can come in here, you know, maybe a little bit darker. Make sure the shading is really spot on. along the bottoms okay we're just finding the bottoms of the clouds aren't we yeah we pick them out and we say oh you're here and they say am I am I really I'm not sure I'm sure I got you I have to wipe out on a paper towel to control my paint. That's no problem. I can do that. Just doing the number 12 blender. Yeah. I'm doing. It's wonderful. Maybe put some dark shadows back in there. In the puffs. You can do that. You yeah. know. Put some dark shadows in the puffs and Really, really. Kind of change the game there. Don't those look like they're going far away? Yeah, over the horizon really now? They're really amazing. This could have been its own little sky course, couldn't it? I know. It would have been like, how to paint this kind of blue sky. Let's really get into it, friends. Always come in. You can also always get a little bit of your sky background if you need to tone your paint as well. So it doesn't even have to always be gray, though I think the gray is best. You can tone with the blue, too. Okay. Find little tops. Little, little, little top. So 
I like doing big paintings on occasion with you guys. Just to show you that you can. Yeah. Just to show you that it's in you. It is in you. That out. It does take a minute to do it. Yeah. There's just so many brush strokes that have to be done. It's okay if it takes you a second to get it, too. It took me a long time to see it. You'll hear that in classes. You've got to learn to see like an artist. But what they really mean is that your brain and you have to get on team. Because mm. your brain's like, like a really happy puppy and it wants to go, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Is this? Is this? And you're like, it's not this. It's not this. You know? It's trying to help you. Sometimes it just doesn't understand what you're asking it. And you gotta be like, all I'm saying is, I want this cloud. Look at us going through this. Fun and puffs. Now, what I often do is I rinse this out, and then, you know, I can come back with it clean and damp and look, blend it. Yeah. So, you, so that problem we have with clouds being fluffy, we don't really have. They can be soft. They can be fluffy and all full of delicate little edges. You probably never worked so hard on a cloud bank in your life. <laughs> You're like, what? I just did the flowers. And I thought 16 by 20. Sure, sure, sure. That's what all these skills are for, isn't it? Yeah. To create this little moment. All right. So we've got more of this to sort of do through here. But I think this first bank fundamentally teaches a principle of where we're going. And because we've got a nice big uh, series of clouds, one that's going to kind of pop here and present here and a couple places through here. This is a good place to let this be. We may come back and add some highlights to it. We may lighten it if we feel like, oh, that's maybe a little dark. It depends on as we go. Um, but this is a good place to stop, dry everything, and continue on. So we're going to continue on with our big sky journey. And I want to tell you a couple things about brushes before we go forward and kind of do the closer, more subject-oriented fluffy clouds. So these are the Artini brushes, right? These are the hogs. And this is a number 12 all the way up to, I think I've been working with the number 20. Anything really in this size range, I would consider a good size for this. You could get away with the 12, but I want you to understand, I'm going to show you a 12 in another brush line. Tara, let me look over your left shoulder so I can okay. see those. All right. So I'm going to zoom in on them. This is a 12 in the Artini brush line, and this is a 12 in another brush line. They're not equal. They are not equal. So a lot of times you guys will be like, what's the brush number? And I'm not picking on you when I say sometimes that's not helpful information. Look for uh, relative size. So in relative size, any of these brush numbers ranging from 16 to 18 to 20 are good because look, they're about the width of a finger. Yeah. Not you a thumb, a but a finger. <laughs> yeah. Right? Whereas the bigger brushes might get on bigger. And so I will tell you the number and the make of the brush, but I want you to be a smart artist when you're out in the world and go, this is a 12, but it's the size of my wrist. And remember that brush mm -hmm. numbers are very emotional. They're, they're just numbered emotionally. They're very rarely numbered based on millimeters or something that would be very practical for you. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. I'm going to continue telling you my brush numbers. I just want you to know that as we go, because that's a question. I should make a whole video about that, so I'm not continually re-announcing it. <laughs> mm. You know. Oh, I'll grab this one. This one is kind of uh, open and messy. Uh, this is my number 20. You can see this is a well-used brush, right? Yeah. We have little hairs that are starting to come out. It definitely needs some sizing in it. That's a reshape where I'm going to get it wet. And I'm going to be thinking about some of the bigger, more focal clouds. I'm not going to finish these until I know where my big boys are. Mm. And that's really just because 
there's no point in putting a whole bunch of detail if I'm going to paint over it. And I'm going to start with my gray. I'm going to get a little bit of my blue into my gray. And if you remember, this is burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And over here is ultramarine blue and phthalo blue. So I'm just getting a bit more blue gray here. That's all I'm doing. More blue gray. And I'm going to come here. And I do believe I want to layer a little bit into this with the bottom of this cloud. And I'm going to bring it in kind of at an angle coming from the left hand side. This is just the bottom. And I'm thinking about this cloud as it comes forward. Because we see a lot of its bottom, right? So it's mm -hmm. closer to us. We see more of its bottom. That's happening. This one will come off the top of our surface. And I'm going to use that little regular little cloud wiggle to sort of talk about what I think the overall contour of it is. And we'll continue it out to here. So I'll get some more white on my brush. Maybe a little more of that gray gray in it. And I will, for the moment, sort of fill in this cloud space. Number 20 Artini Hog Brush. But we know more about brush sizes now, so that's not going to throw us at the, uh, at the art store. All right. Dark, dark, dark through here. And that's just because this cloud is kind of in perspective and we see more of its underneath than we might expect. Just come a little bit darker from the back side, kind of blending in. And then it's up here, it's not quite as fluffy. Maybe we'll make a little upward fluff in the gray. Kind of thinking about its little forward face, blends into this. Notice these are little curls like we talked about, those little curl strokes. I'm just making a little puff shape. I'm just thinking about it. I can have a dry for a second. I have more to put in. I'm yeah. going to wipe off my brush on my paper towel and load up some more white, a little of the gray in it. Let's come here and put, let's think about somebody that might be here. Kind of coming this way. This right here is my glazing blending medium. It's not more white. So see, that's what makes my paint transparent and blend well. So it looks like white is not white. Come out here. We'll just make a little, little thoughtful cloud over here. Still planning out the sky. These are just the focal points of our sky. Maybe this kind of comes out a bit. It has some, some forward aspects that are interesting. A little friend maybe here. If I need to get more glaze into it, I will. That lets me build up, you know, kind of different values in a very white cloud. Not to mention improve the blendability. Little starting to be condensation fellows just happening there. I think we might want to have somebody kind of starring up right here, starring roll. Hmm. Get a little gray into it and then build them up. This is a more forward cloud. Push up here, right here on kind of past the center point, moving that cloud upward, softly blending the base of that cloud, as you'll notice. Backward, that's a nice little kind of built up cloud. Right here, we're going to have quite a big construction. Of a cloud. A little finger in there and kind of blend it out. So 
here, pull that off. I have a big thought, and it's a little thoughtful friend right here. These are some that come forward. Right, so we have their contour shapes. We know where those banks are. They don't really have any form yet. We haven't really started to talk about value. I'll come back here into my dark and add some highlight to that. Let's really maybe think about highlighting up here. I might get my round blender involved again, you know, if I feel like I need. working the toe of the brush you can see I do get little hairs that come out and you guys sometimes will be like oh the hog brush gets all crazy yeah they do they super do that's true painting around the contour this one A little more glazing medium on there. What's the glazing medium do for you there? It improves blendability. It lets me make the paint transparent and it slows down the drying time. That's a good question. We talk about glazing medium a lot. You know, if you just came in, we talk about it a lot during the show, but we'll talk about it a lot just generally. I'm coming back with a little bit of gray. You know, because sometimes parts of these clouds are quite dark. Hmm. You know, they're, they're, they're in shadow and they break a lot of light and they don't really show what's behind them. I'll wipe off. And sometimes even these dark little shadows. I've got to put those little light moments. Maybe this right here is a, a little light against this. Shadow. See how we're doing? Mm hmm And we're back into the cloud from earlier. Maybe a lot more white now and some glazing medium. Use zinc and some other fun whites too in landscapes. What can happen is that you get these, uh, Zinc is very naturally transparent and we don't on this one, but like if you're thinking about like, what is that white for? It's for this kind of techniques where you have lots of transparent layers that are building up. Mm. Wow. I'm just finding a highlight really cool. right here. Light at the front of the bank. When you get it back from a little bit, it looks pretty amazing. Right. You get a little distance and that's why you have to stand back from your work guys, because sometimes you cannot see the work. When you're too in the work, get into my darker values and you know, just make sure that that shading is present. Always okay to rinse out a brush and dry it out, but you do want to dry out hogs because they hold too much water. I'm 
Just getting some lighter colors between the shelving. Sort of perspective values of the clouds coming down. And sometimes I get in there and I'm like, oh, I got I to gotta get some of you back. creating that stairs of shadow. And what you should start seeing is clouds going off into the distance, mm -hmm. which I think we are starting to see. For sure. You know, that's our cloud perspective. Fun stuff. Well worth doing. I like it. I like it a lot. How are you doing, babe? Good. <sighs> All right. Contemplate and think. Got to come up with some highlights that run along here. I got to kind of shape out this cloud and these two bring them forward through uh, light and shadow and continue to, you know, highlight the banks and stuff, you know, make them fortified and full. Let's call this a step. We'll come back and we'll continue persevering on in the sky. So let's continue on putting in sky. We have so much sky to do. Let's keep going sky. I'm going to switch to my round blender, my number 12 round blender. I'm going to get it slightly damp and kind of wipe out the extra and I'm going to begin to highlight my clouds. It's okay if I have some glazing medium, but let's start creating some space and shape to clouds. I'm making those little circular half. They're not total circles. They're like a little, a little comma, right? Huh. Where we're finding the tops of things. Now I'm going to make a forward little, Grip here. Notice the little kind of, I'm going to do it slow motion. I don't know if you can get in it. This is sort of the strobe. It might be hard. That's why I want to slow it down. See if we could catch it. Yeah. I can see very closely. closely. I'm come forward and create a kind of forward little bit here. Mostly closely. Mostly closely. Whatever you got, do come up to the top here. Kind of a similar grip. We'll put a shadow here and a shadow there. So we're just treating our clouds like solid objects. Where's the highlights? Where's the shadows? <laughs> Don't fly into one of those. Yeah, these clouds. They're solid they'll objects. They'll break the plane. Glaze back over. Getting the glaze in. Now I'm going to wipe out. Wipe out, like the Beach Boys would say. Wipe out and get the water out of the brush. And let's maybe get into some gray. Our bird sienna and our ultramarine blue. Make sure that we've got a nice little shadow built between this bank and that bank. See how we doing? Yeah. Glaze is okay. Let me get one going up here. Okay, I see some underneath you. Back into the white. They were bringing that cloud into three dimensions. It isn't a piece of paper that's floating across the sky. And that's sometimes what we're trying to prevent is that feeling of pieces of paper floating across the sky. These have sides, tops, bottoms. They're, they're round, they are spatial. Um, sometimes it can help if you uh, practice uh, perspective skills where you do the clouds as little cubes going through the sky <laughs> just to help you see it you know sometimes it can be super hard to see i'm gonna come here and just make sure that i've got nice shading between these two maybe some coming up into here that one 
in. You're like, man, I'm really like thinking about these clouds. <laughs> you know, clouds I mean, require thought. They do. When you're stopped at a traffic light, really take a look. I do. Take a deep look. I keep my sunroof open. Look at the clouds. Actually, that has been a thing. Like, John was always a sky stare for sure, but I think since we've, you know, had this painting channel and he's been co-hosting with me, he's actually more likely to just sit and look and think about how a sky would be constructed. He's still a fantasy football-style painter. <laughs> uh, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> but, like, you know, that's just because he takes these artistic thoughts and puts them into cars and other spaces. Well, you, I've always been a fan, fan of the night sky, but now I'm also a fan of the daytime sky. The daytime sky is so cool. Because the clouds. I started to see all the different kinds. Well, they just are pretty awesome. And you can come in with some just bright white and capture some things here. Look at that. We're going to come in with some bright white. We're just really painting this cloud. How long can you spend with a sky? As long as you want to. There's no limit to it. You just enjoy yourself. Making sure that these have a little bit of shading. So we kind of see the little spatial relationships between those things. All right, a little more white. Listening to the little dogs playing in the background. <laughs> kind of the opposite of ASMR. <laughs> they may require a separate room. I think they're going to need to. We'll get to a little stopping place and we'll... Yeah, I think they're okay for a minute. Twix was not having it. Twix often is not having it. <laughs> she was like, I do not want to play. Or share. I think that that's the other thing is or share. Whereas, t whereas shortcake's always up for a good play. Always. Yeah, Twix will treat it up here to my chair, so she'll be okay. <laughs> to wait, shortcake. <laughs> shortcake <unhappy>. says no. <laughs> shortcake says, all right, let's, we'll, we'll do an edit here. Oh, yeah. And the dogs are away, so we're going to keep painting. They're treated and happy and feeling very secure in their moments. I'm going to continue on with my white paint, maybe a little glazing medium, and make sure that I get some little high points here on my, again, remember, this is the number 12 Princeton Select, right? So it's a soft brush. If you're having trouble getting any of these techniques with any brush, what do you do? You just switch a brush that lets you get the technique where you're comfortable. You don't, you don't suffer through now. <laughs> We want to make sure that your experiences are enjoyable. Sometimes these brushes wear down more round as you go, right? And you may find that you have to do detail work with another brush and keep these for blending. Because if you love them as much as I do, you're going to get a lot out of them. And I love them. Always paint the cloud with the beautiful subject that it is. Little highlights that it has. Always okay. The glazing medium just so everything stays nice. And let's come in here and be like, ooh, pretty sure. Wet, wipe off. So that was a little thicker than I intended to apply, but look what I can do. Come back with a damp brush. Man, it's like it was on purpose, isn't it? Yeah. And so that's the thing. Don't panic ever in what you're doing. You're okay. Your cloud. You know, kind of maybe give an updraft. Maybe that's catching the end of that cloud a little bit. It happens, you know? 
little wind current comes up and chases it off. Pulling that along. Sometimes uh, John will sometimes give me directions if I'm in the way of the camera. You don't want my head or body in, in the way of what you're looking at. It does obstruct the view. So if you hear John, he's just trying to help me like not be in the way of the camera. That is for you guys. I am not being picked on <laughs> in any way. <laughs> you just reminded me of so I married an axe murderer. Remember his <laughs> really? son? What? Do you remember the kid? Keith, head! <laughs> Down! <laughs> it is so big. Yeah. It's like a planetoid. <laughs> so if my head's being a planetoid, definitely let me know. Come up here and make sure that this is a little... Ah, uh, the inappropriate humor of the 90s. Miss it. Some of it I miss. Some of it I'm kind of glad is gone. <laughs> That's the thing about inappropriate humor. It doesn't age well. It really does not. George Carlin did a good job. Yeah, I think he's pretty timeless. But you know what? He never uh, was at the expense of others. Uh, he punched up, not kicked down. He punched up, not kicked down. That is exactly right. I'm going to kind of come in with maybe a little more gray. Give this a little dimensionality. These are not a small amount of work. Mm -hmm. Just continuing with that little swinging, curling stroke. Loving it. I'm going to step back a little bit, and I'm going to get a view and go, how do I like it? I like it. It's okay. It's getting there. It's all right. Yeah? Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you got to just get back and, and look at things just a little bit. Let's get a little blue into that. That's a nice blue. Yeah. Sometimes I like to get a little of the mid-range blue. Soften things out a bit. See how that does? Yeah. Really cool, really cool sky. I don't, there. I don't just mean that because it's got a. Says cool I'm your blue. wife, and we have a YouTube channel, and we're hoping people like, comment, and subscribe. And if I'm not incorrect, this is a uh, subjectively cool sky. I mean, you know what? YouTube will tell us, won't it? No, no. I mean, <laughs> like you use cool colors. YouTube will come by and be like, "These are the seven reasons why I love your sky, or not love your sky." Sometimes. I know, I I think you're still thinking of metaphorically. So are are these cool blues or warm blues? These are, um, well, it kind of ranges through cool and warm. We're playing cool and warm oh. blues against each other. I meant subjectively. Like, I like it. You painted it well or no. No, no, I just do. But I mean, I was trying, I like, <laughs> and then I was like, well, actually, I thought that you used cool colors, except for the clouds. Those <laughs> seem warm. Clouds are cool. Are clouds aren't warm. This area here is a warm blue. This starts oh. to cool down. These are definitely cool and neutralized. See, I don't know, but like, that's why I asked. I love that you asked. Because you know what's happening right now? No. Somebody in the premiere is asking. So that's what's that's what's the big deal. So we still do live. I know this is kind of weird. Um, it's just we had a lot going on. And we did not want to defer your painting again. That just well, seemed mean. There's an event going on. There's this event going on, and we were there, and so we just didn't want to have all of that come in and disrupt. I just added some glue to that, you know, just creating that sort of. And if you're interested in events it. that we might host in the future. <laughs> you should email us. You, well, no, you just go to our website, com, and then go to events. 
and it'll say what events are going on. Yeah, we're already talking about the next one with my mom. The next and the next two or three that we're gonna post up that'll be slightly smaller. A little more, a little more boutiquey. Well, they'll be more <sighs> intimate. I think I want to pull this down a little lower. In the natural beauty of Pennsylvania, that's yeah. short for middle of nowhere, yo. <laughs> but there's a lot of waterfalls and trees. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just coming back with a little bit of white and, you know, creating a little space for this one's maybe a little more seen. That's what we're always doing. We're just filling in the sky. Filling in the sky. Just going. Now I kind of want to, um, again, whoop, dropped a brush and pick up another one. Get away. <laughs> got away. Just, <laughs> Just got, got another one. Same brush. <laughs> I'm coming in with just a little blue so that I can kind of. So that's just the exact same brush. That's just the exact same brush, but I have like. Ten of them, so you had a backup. I had backups. Yeah, I do. I kind of keep backups. It's uh it's a true true story. There we go. Just kind of trying to make that more substantially its own. And then we just have these here. Goodness gracious, here we go. Yeah, I have many, many backups. Other clouds. Other clouds also happened. Did they? Yes, they did. Glazing medium. Let's come here and uh make sure that this cloud has a little bit of shading underneath. And uh, let's pull in some little shading between these two. Just a little bit. It's just a thought. Because that's always kind of fun. And I come in here and start to fill in. So it's just like the other side, but this side. But this side. Yes, exactly. Just like what we did, but uh, this side. And I'm using a lot of the glazing medium. And you can see that does improve brushability. That does let me blend longer. Now, there is a higher mountain that's coming here. right? We're going to have to raise this up a little bit. And so these will really tuck behind that. Don't So don't be too stressed here. Great place for you to be like, all right, I'm going to relax a little. Yep. I think well, I've got it. While you're talking to them about all the cloud stuff, mm. some of the things that I have observed from my armchair painting adding a highlight layer here. Yes. Is like you know, quarterback who's never played. Right, yes. Um, it seems that non repeating clouds is the key to a good sky. One hopes. Like that's what one of the things I always try to do is not clone my clouds. Clown clone. I Don't. you know, we all tend to a little, but like that's the goal and that's why sometimes Clowns. using uh, references can be so helpful because your brain's going to want to repeat patterns. It just is. It's going to make the want to make the cartoon floof, 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 cloud. Floof, floof, floof. It is. It just wants to do it, and you can't blame it. It's just doing its thing. It doesn't mean to be that way. It's going to be the like the Snoopy three descending poofs on the left and then a yeah. flat bottom. That's the one I always make. Floof, floof, floof. And then it's like, look, it's a cloud. Well, it's because clouds often do have flat bottoms. That's the atmosphere pushing up on the base of the clouds, and we're seeing them in perspective over the, you know, so there's this sort of thing happening. Yeah, there's a huge difference between your cloud and my cloud, though. <sighs> Mine could go in a Peanuts cartoon much more than it could go in a painting like this. But that's just, okay. You just go where you go. Now I'm going to get a little of my very light sky and some more white. I'm going to come here and just make sure that we're clear underneath here. Clear! <laughs> See, I have put no experience points into painting. You have not, but you still sometimes paint because of the cars. This is true. So we're getting there, right? We're, we're working them out. We're thinking about them. I'm rinsing out fairly often and uh, continuing to build, you know, what I've got. Come up here and... Give this nice column some shape. 
So I'm trying to pull banks that are forward versus banks that are past. That's my mom texting me to say, I'm almost over here, but no, it's my ring saying, you huh. stood up. My rings are always very proud on me on easel day. <laughs> they just you think I'm doing good so good. You've done all the standing you need to do. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Box You're a standing now. hero now. Yeah. Trying to get some little gray going. And I can get a little more blue into it. You know, I just... You just keep shading them in, right? Yeah, we're just shading things in. Defining their range. Look at us go. We're getting through this. And, you know, this is going to create a very nice environment for our landscape and our flowers. This feels like a place flowers would thrive, doesn't it? does. I'm just taking a little heavier application of, say, the white. Kind of finding little peaks. Blend a little bit there. Because I have that nice glazing medium. Yes. Lazy medium is here so I can blend this lighter color in to the lower part of the bank. Get a little more white on there. You can see this load if you're wondering, how am I loading this brush? It's not so heavy that I would be just glopping paint out, is it? No. There's paint on there in an application that would... Definitely leave little highlights on these clouds, but not so much that, uh, you know, I have no control over what's going on. These are a little like uh, my original cloud brushes, but my original cloud brushes were really stiff, which is great for dry brushing, but not fantastic for blending. Mm. Dig in there, your cloud? No, it's a uh, hair. What was it? Hair. Oh, where'd it come from? Brush. <gasps> Sometimes they do that. On occasion, they'll it drop happens. a hair. Little hair. Doesn't really ruin my day, so I tend to mm. not be that upset at them. Interesting. It's becoming a very interesting fellow, this. Yes, it is. Just enjoying the... I love kind of pulling these in and finding their little moments. The little moments that shape out the cloud. Yeah. Come here and give a little moment to here. Now it's in a more lit area. Down here it's a bit lighter, right? Yeah. Because they're far away and they're in the brighter part of the sky. Oh my gosh, guys, I feel like we did it. I'm going to I'm gonna call the sky good. I think I could do 10 hours just on the sky. I think I could, but I feel like we've gotten the concept. We've really dug deep into it. Hopefully, you're finding your space in that. Let's dry everything just, just so it's dry and we can layer. And we'll start putting in the mid-ground of the painting. So now we're going to start putting in some of the landscape elements. I'm going to pull my T-square ruler out. That way, if you are 
painting along at home on a 16 by 20 canvas, you kind of have a sense of where things are. If you're painting this smaller, you know, we've got that traceable, but you would just sort of scale it in the same way. That's how we sort of size up and size down. Objects are relationally the same, uh, no matter a big or small, right? So like in relationship to the space on the canvas, you know, the hill might be a third up from the top. So that's sort of a way of thinking about it. But this particular case, we're going to say, um, let's say the top of our hill, I'm gonna grab a filbert here. This is a number 12 filbert and I'm gonna make a mark at, oh gosh, the four and a half from the top space down. And I'm gonna come from the side, heading downward and then let's make a little peak. Oh yeah. Coming down, that's a nice distant hill. Here's your distant distance. And over here, and this was about six inches down, if you'll remember, we will create a distant line of landscape as well. Just on the toe of the brush, I'm just using this to sort of speak of these far away spaces. Come there. Now on the bottom here, really, gosh, almost a half inch up from the right corner and then over four inches from the left, say, Let's come up to oh, a couple inches down from our top line, right? Right yep. here. We're going to say that there is a road. Now, the interesting thing about the road is, is that it's going to curve over to this. We will lose a bunch of this because there's going to be some upward flowers and grasses going like this. So we just want to have a nice little curve. All right, that's believable. And then from here, we're going to merge up there. It's getting a nice little sketch going on it. Maybe even a little more kind of diagonal. So we have that and then coming off here a little bit to the inside of what our perspective is going to be. This will come down into the center. So that'll be our dirt road going away. And I know I'm going to have some mid range mountains, right? They're sort of in front of these little fellows. And I'm going to do with this all with just light burnt sienna. Maybe they come down and just have a little, a little force range there. Cause that's the sort of mid range. And then our field really, starts in this space, right? Where we're gonna start seeing the field, which is why we will have some of that road into perspective and it vanishes in the distance. And then this might kind of curve out a little bit that way. So that's the basic zones of our landscape. Now, if you're doing a traceable, this is a great place to use that. You don't have to use a number 12 filbert. I just liked sketching with it. It was big and it kind of let me make in some broad strokes. So this step, I'm gonna simplify and say, get this in. Where you're happy with it. When we come back, we're going to start painting in the distant landscape. So you'll have noticed I put out some fresh colors on my palette and that's because I'm moving away from those tones that I need for the sky and we're going to be, you know, working in some different hues now, some different colors. So let's look at the palette real quick. Mars black, yellow ochre. You can also find this called yellow oxide. Either one, they're one to one, the same, same. There's different makeup of them, but they're the same color. Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, Cad Yellow Medium, Thalo Green, Cad Red Medium, and Titanium White. I'm going to be working a number 20 hog brush. This is a Raphael Artini hog brush, but it's just a bright. It has hog filaments. That's what we're really talking about. I'm going to begin on our distant hills. For our distant hills, here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking a little bit of our ultramarine blue and cad yellow and see how that makes very a, a much diminished green from that thalo green and we're going to get this into our burnt sienna and be this kind of a green brown seem reasonable seems reasonable so far All right so that's the color that we're mixing i'm not doing it with the palette knife ahead of time and i'm going to be coming along here making a little firm edge and then Pulling down little short strokes, making this sort of raw 
Do these little short strokes. Mm. What What's going to be happening here? It's going to be going very quickly. I will add yellow ochre, you know, for highlights, and sometimes yellow ochre and a touch of titanium white. So that's where we're going to be going. You guys ready for that? I think so. I think so. they are. So back up into the color. Burn sienna. Let's come along the top here with the nice bright. We're using the edge of the bright to create zones. Get this sort of covered and then we'll come in and deal with the brush strokes. Sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of paint down. Yeah. Before you put the paint down. Have you ever noticed that? Maybe not. Gotta put the paint down. Before you put the paint down. This one I'm gonna mix a little greener. Still got a brown in it. It still has the uh uh ultramarine blue and yellow, cad yellow, but now it's just a little more there. So you can kind of see I'm just really working this in. I don't have a heavy load. I'm just working this in at the moment. I'm going to take some of my yellow ochre. Mix in and start to come along the hill here. Making a little downward kind of strokes. Interesting, isn't it? It is interesting. Now that you mention it. Might get a little more green and yellow together. This is definitely greener than the burnt sienna version. And I'll mix more yellow into that for this part of the faraway hill. You see how it's just mildly starting to be lighter? Yes. Get a little more ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. We're going to talk about some of this hill might be in shadow. Mm -hmm. And we know why it's in shadow. Because, you know, stuff's over it. Stuff's going away, but stuff is also going to be over it. And there we go. Coming forward, I'm going to add more burnt sienna. More burnt sienna. If I need to get a smidge of water, I will. I don't get too much water, though, mm. because I don't want my brush to get too wet. So I do work it in at first, and then I come in and make that short, choppy brush stroke. Which will be a bigger deal in a minute. Much more yellow ochre into that brighter green. And we're just starting to get these distant little values. I can come in and add a little white into some of my mixes where I need to lighten the value. I want it to be greener and lighter. White's the way to go. Be back on the back hill. And there's just definitely some highlighting on this hill back here. We'll rinse out. I like to get clean on my color on occasion, right? 
So what I have is still a lot of canvas showing through, and I'm starting to get some value worked out on these different hills, some different hue. But you really, really, really want to let it layer up. If dry over here, I can work the area over here because I want to do layer on in my dry space. I'm just getting some tops of things. And you will just get some tops of things. You know, sometimes it's ultramarine blue, cad yellow, and you're coming over here. And it's, it's dark, but it's lighter than maybe what was underneath. And perhaps a little biased green. Oh, yeah. Let's play with that now. Back into this. Go along there and just make sure that these hills feel like they're different spaces, right? Yeah. Having a little white into my Add yellow and ultramarine blue. A green many people do not naturally like, but is actually super useful in landscape painting mm. because it's a little desaturated. Got a little bit of burnt sienna back here. So far away ground. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to do something wild. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and a smidge of my phthalo green. Start working it in. That's a pretty deep green now, isn't it? Yeah. And by contrast out here, it will be quite dark. A little bit of dark shading and dancing in the distant landscape, as you might have. More burnt sienna. Takes it more into sort of this olivey green. I'm wiggling back and forth, kind of creating a nice little version there. And then I'm going to go back into my white. And this little sort of mixture of brown and everything we have here, it's just lighter. I'm going to get some yellow ochre into it. doesn't really matter how you're playing, you're just playing. A little bit of light value happening off in the distance there. These are more distinct marks. They're kind of like uh, maybe distant stones mm. along that far away mountainscape that you might have. A little more burnt sienna. 
and a little more yellow ochre. Isn't that a neat kind of combo? Much more into the yellow ochre here and some titanium white. Making a pretty light value, and I think I want to capture a sort of a light area here. Look at that. Just making the far away things. Look how far away things. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Let's make some far away stuff. So let's call that a step. We got a lot done, and we'll continue moving forward through our landscape as we go. So we have some core distant details I want to get into. I'm going to use a small little bright brush. This is a number six Princeton. Let's go. All right, I'm going to get the brush lightly wet. You see the number six Princeton. Um, this is called a bright shader. I'm going to get a little bit of my black and brown together. I'm going to make a dark kind of shadow color. Let's come here and make some very sharp and crisp lines. These will represent different kind of like stones and things, right? Because this background mountain space will have some of those. So we'll come back and add some of that. I'm coming down and coming across. I'll still come put some highlights back in so you'll really be able to see it still. I'm going to take a little bit of the black, ultramarine blue, tad yellow making this sort of very deep olive. Mm. And just kind of edging in a little bit of space. I can work some yellow into that mix, that all yellow ochre. And edging this out here. Similar kind of thing here. I'm going to come back into my black. Down, 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 back, back. All right, just making little very rough shapes. There we go, coming down. I'm going to get into this yellow ochre and white. Let's add some burnt sienna into it. Pretty light color, isn't it? Yeah. These are like little stones. I might even go lighter than that, John. Yeah? Might get a little white and a little yellow in there and go even lighter. Mm, I can see Very it. Very sandstone. All sorts of geology happening in our landscape, isn't it? And then we just take a nice little look at it and we go, you know, if it's too much, you can always come back and green and take some out. Around the stones. Try to capture some different little edge. We like it. We go for it. Yeah. Get back into our little beige here. Let's 
I'm just working it back and forth. I'm going to rinse out. Go ahead and take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my phthalo green and just go much more burnt sienna. Just brush this this way. So that's maybe a little more thought than you might normally put into a distant landscape, you know, for yourself. But what happens is when you do these thoughtful things, when you are thoughtful, so thoughtful in this way, I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow ochre over here with that brown and green mix, burnt sienna and phthalo green. Add some white into it. And just add a little dusting of this here. And even though it's a very muted color, it's like some of that is greening up for spring, isn't it? Yeah. How fun is that? And where those little rocks are, I mean, they should have a little shadow, shouldn't they? Oh my goodness. Oh, I was about to put that in my coffee. <laughs> so again, that's just a number six shader. What do I like about this brush? It's firm, it's crisp, it's stiff, it lets me do the work. Now I'm going to take a little look at this and see what I want to add to it. What do I want to add? How do I want it to be different? I think I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna on very lightly on my brush. Can you see how it's just super lightly? I'm going to glaze these back. See how I'm doing there? Because the paint is transparent, I can push them back into the nice distance. And so they're there, but they're not overwhelming. And that lets the other ones maybe be a little more forward and I can come in and even. This works on transparent colors, right? Because they, they allow you to push things back like this. So glaze. And come on the edge there. So just a few little values there. Just adding it up. Taking the corner of my brush. And just sort of tapping out little shapes. And let me show you what I mean by that. All right? Just in case it's hard to kind of see as I'm going. See, I'm using just the corner to make little taps. That's how you get that going. Look at that go. Guys, we are owning it. Yeah, you really are. That looks so super good. Okay. Let us continue forward in our landscape. And we're going to add sort of this middle range to foreground area. We've got kind of a dirt farm road turning into this sort of field, and it's a field of drug rashes and flowers and things that are sort of happening. To begin that, I'm going to take that number 20 hog brush. You could just any bright, guys. It could be any bright that you want. It doesn't have to be this bright. I'm just going to use this bright because I like the rough color and mixture of it. I'm going to take a little of my, alt, my uh, yellow ochre and my burnt sienna kind of making my base dirt road. See that color right there? Yeah. Base dirt road color. I think you can see it, but let's kind of come here. And we're going to be going little brush strokes kind of are going to be orchestrated like this with little up and down ones to talk about the center. So cross, up and down, sometimes here in the corner. Okay. That's what we're going to be working. I'm 
Now, as I get further away, I'm going to kind of level out and then kind of curve a little bit on either side of what is going to be the road. All right. See that little bit of a curve? Yeah. That'll layer in as we go. We'll get bigger and broader. And try to remember this is, you know, ready player layer one. We have a light value. We have a rust value. We've got lots to do here. I need to get the brush a titch wet. That's okay. I don't want to over wet it because it will soak and that won't be great for the painting. Just coming here right now. Again, a little bit of curve to that stroke. Mm, stuck a little bit of blue to here. Oh. I will just paint over it. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but it happened. So sometimes it'll happen. You'll get a little... Probably I put a canvas up here or did something and a little blue stuck to it. So that's sort of that little work that I have there. I'm going to get a little bit of my burn sienna more focused over here. And maybe a smidge of my black. And just a little bit. Kind of curve the brush stroke the opposite way. A little bit. But you can already see there's sort of a, just the directionality does a thing, doesn't it? Yeah. Over makes it look like it could be raised. And then smiling, frowny makes it look like the ground goes up and smiling makes it look like the ground goes down. And I'm just blending here on the edge. Let's take a little bit of our burnt sienna and uh, make sure the edges here have a little extra rust to them. These are little touches, but they make a difference in the long run. And we're going to be painting all the stones and everything and the roughness of the ground. Here. And again, I can add a little white to this even as I go. Make sure that this is even a little highlighted. Look at that. These things absolutely do. I'm going to grab a little cad yellow over here. These things absolutely do imply shape, texture, form. It's kind of fun. Yeah. I think that's all we're doing on that road. That that just sort of tells us there's a road. There there's some road. stuff afoot. We're gonna we're gonna plan it in. Now I also need to hit two ranges of field. Okay. Right. So back here in this range of field, let me put out some more burnt sienna as you do. And I'm going to again do a little bit of my burnt sienna and my yellow ochre kind of mixed together. But this time, we're going to be doing that little downward stroke. Remember how that is? Mm. It can be a little more yellow. This is not the lightest or the darkest of that stroke. Doing the same across here, a little downward, 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 downward.
I have a lot of paintings like this. I've got a really great one of Cosmos. Mm. Flowers going off in the fields. It's really fun to do this. Just down, 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 down. You got this, guys. You can do it. It's a big project. It's just a lot more brush strokes. And, you know. A smaller one. A smaller one. It's not actually harder to paint a big one than a smaller one. It just takes a little more time because you're covering more canvas. Now, I am kind of taking the gold in for a second before I bother to get my green. And my green is going to be my burnt sienna and my phthalo green. I'm going to kind of layer this in here, going around. Smaller strokes, so I have a little more control. Yeah. Sometimes on the edge. Now here, I mean, it's like really kind of stronger. Back there, it's a little bit shorter and for sure we will be weaving the two colors together when we get there but right now we're just kind of putting the i'm picking what the predominant hue is right that's what i'm choosing is the predominant hue i can go in and make little integrations as i go but i just need that predominant hue to start Same, same. Other side. So you kind of move over left. Mm. Not an even amount. Like there's just some different growth in there. I'm making, I'm making space for all the All the little blades. All of them. Oh, too green. And the reason I feel it's like too green is I just want kind of a depth to it so that when I do anything brighter than that, it really shows out. Right. Sometimes I'll have to go back and forth like this to fill it in and then come back into the brush stroke to create that roughness. Or you can go like this. Here, I'm in trouble finding the green. It's right there. It's that deep green. And again, dirt road may come into the grass. We may have to do some weaving, and we can do that, but we just go with the predominant color. Doesn't mean we don't consider that there's grass into the dirt. We do. You'll see me doing kind of big strokes, just filling in spaces. I'm just making sure white canvas is covered. See that go in. Even if I go across like this, I'll come back and kind of obscure it with an upward downward motion. Hmm. I have to put a little more burnt sienna out there. So we're using a heavy amount of burnt sienna, this particular painting, and that's not surprising. It's such a natural landscape. Not surprising, such a natural landscape. A little water in my brush. You can see that it flows much out. I have to be so careful with the hog, though. Oh, it really wants to hold all the water. All of it, all of it, all of it. I 
Oh my goodness, we have the underpainting of the foreground middle ground kind of space. So a little bit of middle ground and a lot of foreground and we have that kind of all in and underpainted at this moment. All right, it's a good idea to really thoroughly dry your canvas, make sure the paint is bound so you can do the dry brushing and layering on top of it. So make sure you dry it thoroughly. I don't know why I step off. I step off the mat. I'm like, let me get out of the way of the painting. And then I come back and I'm, let me get out of the way of the painting. I come back. Oh, so silly. Hopefully you guys are doing okay. Remember, you can pause, you can rewind, use the mini book. You know, those are the steps that go with it where you can see the steps out. There's the infographics, traceables. There's resources to sort of help you find your way through everything that we're doing. All right, and come back with the canvas dry. We're going to add some more layers. So we're going further into the landscape. We're going to be working this middle range. We're going to be doing distant reeds and flowers. So that's a lot of fun about how we create that feeling of things being a little further away from us, but yet still visually interesting. Now I did walk away from my palette and my paint dried. Fun tip on the wet palette, you got to leave the lid on for it to work. So I put out fresh paint, but it's the same paint in the same order. So you are okay. Now let's get into this middle range here. Lots of little dry, weedy grasses sort of blowing, and then the beginnings of the flowers and the distant road. Fun stuff to work on. Definitely going to be doing my number 16 Artini, D'Artini hog brush. You can use any hog brush. I just want something that's scratchy, like we've been using. I'm going to go ahead and get it wet, wipe it off on a paper towel, and begin a little bit of the undergrass. Okay. So let's take some of this head, uh, oh, yellow ochre and a little bit of burnt sienna. And a smidge of our white. We're going to come here and just make the beginnings of the strokes that'll talk about this field. These are short strokes. We do see like the tops of the grasses, which is kind of nice. I think I'm going to get more in my yellow ochre and burnt seeing a little less white hair as I go. Just little short strokes here. We're doing good. Come on, come into this space here. And we're just adding a little more pigment than we had to the canvas, right? Now let's come over here and do a similar thing. Maybe a little more burnt sienna this time. And just come back with our little grasses. You can see I'm kind of doing an angle brush stroke from the right down. I mean the left down. Just pulling that down. Pulling it down. But keeping those brush strokes random. So I don't make too many patterns. When I have that in, I do want to make different values. So if I come here, my yellow ochre, smidge of my cad yellow, smidge of my green. These are sort of grasses that have an, the kiss of green on them. John, they have a kiss of green. They're not green, it's just they have a little kiss of green in them. Sometimes, you know, we, we paint things so simplistically, we forget to stop and enjoy the complexity also that can be present in a painting, if we want it to be. That little Kiss of green also helps it go from this hill to these grasses a bit. Tells a story. Notice it is not distinctly green though. It's like the chlorof chlorophyll is fading out just now. Through there. Again, a little yellow, a little green over here. Maybe a little burnt sienna in the brush. And this time quite a lot of white. 
put some highlighted spaces in the grass. Little short strokes, you can see they're at an angle. My brush is very straight out from the canvas, and I'm making little flick motions. I've got a little run of them through this middle space, leaving some grass top and bottom. And I will add a couple other highlighted places. But I don't fill it all up with this color because this is where the light is catching. Maybe the wave of the grass. And come here and do a similar thing. A little cad yellow, a little phthalo green. Quite a bright green. Tone it with a little burnt sienna. And get into my yellow ochre. Coming up here kind of diagonal and you can kind of see that I just slightly brush it. Got a little Remington on our hands here. We're getting getting a little big country. That's not bad, is it? No, Let's take a all. look at that and see how we're doing. So our, we're starting to see little elements of wave in our grass. You know, if you take that in, you can see we need some depth, right? We're going to need some depth and some more highlight. We're going to continue to build that through. And we just look at that and evaluate and, you know, say, how does that look? To our eye? Does it feel distant? Does it feel far away? We just got to find our way into the painting is what it is. Yeah. How you doing, babe? Good. Excellent. So I'm going to come here and take a little of my Mars Black and Burnt Sienna together. Smidge more Mars Black. We're just deepening some of this grass color. Little short strokes though. That isn't changing. A lot of thought for a bunch of distant dry grass, isn't it? Putting a lot of thought into it. It is a lot. Looking at that, making sure we're getting the depth we want. Always come through with just yellow ochre too sometimes. And come right up here to my yellow, green, and brown light color. Just adding my brush in. So when I feel like I've got a nice wave in my grass, a little variance, a little a little personality, I'm going to wipe my brush out very thoroughly. And I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna. A smidge of my Mars black, but mostly burnt sienna. And I'm going to add the tops of these little reads touching my brush up and down very lightly these are the little blooming grasses I'm 
Sometimes I come to the corner. Kind of break the line of the brush. And this is just going to take a minute to do. Just relax. Breathe in. Some of your uh, grasses will have redder brown. Some will be darker. Just like there was a little bit of variance in the sea of the gold. The tops of their the grasses that we're catching here. They'll have variance too. See, I'm just coming in that little corner. I don't know if you guys are catching exactly what I'm doing because sometimes it's hard to see. So I'm going to come here. So sometimes I'm going like this, just touching the brush. Got some grass tops. And sometimes I'm coming on that corner and just pulling them down. That's like maybe a little big. So what I'll do is I'll diffuse it out, break it up. But we're trying to imagine that this is just on the top. And it's kind of like our clouds it is in perspective, right? So the further away it is, the closer the tops will be. And then the closer they come to us, the more open and visible they'll be. Little distant doggies. And I'm just bringing this through. And it's a little bit quiet. You know, I'll get quiet. John will get quiet. It's relaxing. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes I'm also like, my mic can, can hear the little doggies barking, so I have to make it muted. <laughs> and lately they've been in this thing where they just get each other barking. <laughs> Nothing really going on, but one of them thinks there could be, and then the other one's just not going to get left out of it. <laughs> So let's look at that to see, okay, so we're now we're seeing the tops of these little grasses that's sort of happening in our, in our landscape, right? We're building that in. Yeah. This is going quite well. Same thing, this side. Close together when they're far away, and then you know maybe you'll see more individual bits of it as they get closer. I think of a lot of different ways I can do things like splatter, different brushes to get more diffused effects. I really just go through and just break down all the ways, so many ways I can do stuff in a painting. It's not just one way. Let's come here and get a little bit of our yellow ochre and our woo cad yellow. Maybe a smidge of our cad red. And a little bit of bright gold. A couple spots to our distant field. Bright gold. Never did you know that grass was so involved. Like, oh, far away grass. Such so a, many layers. So much going on. Every moment in the painting, so much going on. A little white into it. 
Yeah. Like cutting between the tops of the grasses now, aren't we? Yeah. Just working things out. Oh, here I'm diffusing. If you get too heavy on a story on your brush, you diffuse it out. Now that's a lot, guys. We just did a lot, okay? So let's call this a step because it was just a lot to take in. And if it took you a minute to do it, that is okay, right? You take your pace. It's a big canvas. There's a lot to think about if you've been trying to level yourself up in the projects that you're doing and you pick this one, you picked an excellent one, but also remember to be soft and easy with yourself and give your, give yourself space to process the layers, to work out what you want to add or not add. All right. When we come back, we're going to continue on our middle of the canvas journey. The little Twix here was underneath going sniffle, sniffle, sniffles. I need some attention. So we're going to take a little attention break. Got to give some attention when I need attention. Because, you know, I'm just standing here doing nothing. That's she what it is so. for dogs. They're like, I don't know. She just stands there for hours on end. <laughs> that would be much more efficiently used petting. Doesn't she love it? She's just like, oh. This is the dog oh, that so loves dog. the pets. She loves the pets. We, and uh, I just really enjoy her. She's very sweet. Ah, so we're going to continue on our journey up this road. <laughs> the never-ending road, John. How are you feeling? It's a road. Good. It's a road, we're and we're going to continue on further down. up the road. Up the road. Not down it? Uh, I don't know. Man, I, I, I'm going to say, who knows, man. I'm going to add some flowers and some road here, though. Now, I'm going to want my... Greenery to be coming down kind of at a more extreme angle here. And I'm going to want to be blending in my bright greenery and some little distant little flowers, little wildflowers. Fun stuff to do. So I'm still here with the 16 D'Artigny hog brush. I'm going to continue on with the brush strokes kind of that you've already learned. But we're going to add some value and some color out here to everything. Brighten it up. Let this become greener and more full flowers in the center of the road. Get some little rebellious greenery down there. It's so rebellious, John. Ooh, I'm into rebellion. So we're going to start with a little of our burnt sienna and our phthalo green. And on this side, I'm going to come here and just touch very lightly my dark little color up. It just gives me some depth to build up on. And then as we come back here, it might get into that kind of grassy area some. Over here. I'm going to add that dark green again. You can see I'm just pushing that brush stroke up, right? Flicking upwards on the toe, flicking up. And even darker, more dried out, we're going to start to talk about the center of the road. You can hear my little phone beeping. It's over here doing little zzz, zzz. <laughs> It's on like silent notifications, but it has a lot to say. You can see these are just little clumps. Right now we're just starting to think about how they come in the curve. You'll notice they're going to be closer here and show, show more of the far bank. You know, and that's just something 
you'll see as we come here these will be bigger right because they're closer to us now I'm going to add a lot more yellow and green bring it up a bit just the beginning of brightening it up I haven't brightened it up a ton we're adding that contrast it's pretty pretty chill about that I'm gonna rinse this brush out and put it to the side and I'm gonna get into this round hog it's a smaller one it's a number eight you can see it's small in relationship to my finger it's still in the same brush line I just you know sometimes you get a brush line that you like and you just get a bunch of their brushes it happens it happens I'm gonna take my burnt sienna to my Mars black I'm gonna you know, come everyone, along the edge of this road. I felt like for a long time everyone gave me such a hard time because I liked, you know, BMWs and Ferraris. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, you just like the brand name. And I'm like, have you ever driven one? It's sort of like with your brushes. It's like, you know, you know once you get a good brush, you can be kind of brand loyal. It's true. Once you like its result. And I'm adding some depth and darkness to the center here. The reason is, is that there's a lot of rust, a lot of iron, you can kind of tell out here. And then there's a lot of sun bleaching on the road. This was clearly a road where pairs of horses have <laughs> gone down a lot. Yeah, I, I'd say that uh, probably... You know, it, yeah, it is a it's a road to somewhere that somebody's using because it's definitely worn down enough for traffic. What's interesting is not out. worn down enough that the center of the road hasn't got some plants hanging on. They are hanging on, aren't they? We come here with a little bit of our yellow ochre and our burnt sienna. I think this is a very old road I think so too because it new roads tend to be you know have a good center plowing I add a little more red on this side and a little and red here we're just really sort of Working out the dirt. Dirt's interesting to paint. Well, aren't you using dirt to paint dirt? <laughs> I'm literally using dirt to paint dirt. I kind of thought so. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I don't want to say that's cheating, but it <laughs> is using a pigment to good effect. It is using a pigment to good effect. I'm gonna add a little white to bleach out my kind of dirt. I'm going to. Very softly going across. I'm sure I will be adjusting this a bit. Mm. Going to talk uh, about the tire tracks there. Because what happens is I'll, I'll go up and down. I'm just trying to make the uh, worn down part of the road. Ah. Uh -huh. This road really does have a lot to say because of the, like, you just don't see the, the grasses in the center of the road very often. Um, and for it to be worn down and have all, like, you do, but it's a rare thing anymore. It is getting to be a less common thing anymore, isn't it? Which is a shame. You know, you see, see times pass. You know, appreciate what they offered. Again, these we're just not totally to detail. We're just making sure that we're thinking about how this road is. Now I'm going to come back with this 
burnt sienna. I can even press this up and down because here at the edges, it's uh, it's not smooth. Right? There's rocks and debris that clutter up here. That's where the rough rocks are. That's, yeah, because they get kicked to the side, don't they? They do. The smooth rocks are in the middle, and they get squished down. Squish, squish, squish. You can come in and add a little dark value to it to kind of talk about maybe some stones. And sometimes you'll see me carry a little value through space. You're like, oh, there's a there's a kind of dark discoloration. Oh yeah. It's the start. It's not the finish. Not the finish. Just the start. Layers a rinse of out, road. huh? Layers of the road. Layers of the road. I'll rinse out and come here and. Continue on, just maybe the thought of the. It'll get more involved here as you go. I'm going to just let my fog brush kind of work for me. Every layer that I build up will create another space by which. Look at that, I can just go back and forth. Pretty rough with the brush. Makes a nice sound. Kind of a scrub, 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 scrub. Yeah, it's a nice sound. Then you get back into the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre. Back and forth you go. And we'll get into more detail later. I think this is a this was a lot to take in to get the road to here, right? We're, this is roughed in still. We haven't finished the road. We've just begun to speak of the road with our paint yeah. and our line and our brushes. We'll come back and we'll continue on telling this wonderful story of a road. And uh, guess what? What? It's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Relax your shoulders. It's a long project. Make sure you're pacing yourself, giving yourself plenty of rest time. Plenty of time to process and think. It's okay to take that time. All right, when we come back, more painting. So I want to add some fine details and flowers to this distant space. Begin adding little stones and interesting texture. Um, I can do it with the brushes I've been using, but I have a superpower brush that I'm going to use because it's really going to help me do this. Yeah. It makes my experience so much easier. It's 100% why I use this, um, and I'll show it to you. It is a Filbert Grainer. And how does that work? I'm going to, I just got it wet so you can see it. It's like a Filbert that has had little scissors coming your, in and pairing. Oh, this one's a three eighths. Look over your left. Mm. I'm trying to. No, you're good. Oh. Look, there you go. Okay. I'm just trying to adjust my focus so I can see it. Okay, so that's where we're at. I'm going to show you how oh. it kind of works. I'm going to go ahead and get some of my paint on it. What I do find is for it to really, really be great and effective, it helps if the paint's a little thin. Hmm. Right, so not its thickest paint. So it goes on there. And what it does is give you these fine lines. Oh, if you those are fine. Those wonderful. And the trick to this is... I am going to press and pull up, and then I also change direction. So we can see the little spring of the Lacombe brush. Spring, 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 spring. spring. Sometimes these are called uh, grass combs. Sometimes they're called filbert grainers. Uh, the Princeton oh. Velvet Touch is a very nice one. I like the feel of it in my hand. I didn't know I was mismatching terms there. Well, they could be called either. It's interchangeable. It's interchangeable. So let's look at it again. Right. My pressure's not too heavy. You can see if it's got too much of a dry brush, it doesn't really do the technique. 
it's definitely one where I begin in stronger on the technique and release at the end. It is definitely one of my favorite grass tools. And also it's going to let me, and I'll do it with my, um, I'll do it with a red just so you can see it. And it'll let me make little distant happy flowers. Aren't those great? Oh, yeah. They're fantastic. I have to do it with another brush. It's going to take forever, ever, ever. And it will also do nice stones. So it's going to do most of the lion's share of this next part. It is a fantastic tool. It's good for waves. It's good for trees. It's good for, there's just nothing it's not good for. Again, if you don't have one, you can take a filbert and pair of scissors and make one. These brushes were all made by an artist at some point, and then the brush companies just knock off that artist's ID and sell it to you. So just know if you cut your brush, you avoid the warranty. All right. So if you cared about that, that is a thing I let you know. So back to the painting. Back to the painting. Let's come back here and get in some really light greens. So I'm going to work my yellow into my bright green over here. You know, getting it very, very light. And I'm adding a drop or two of water, right, so that the flow off the brush is good. I don't want it to be watercolor, but I do need it to be fluid enough for me to be able to go here and create little, little moments. Aren't they wonderful? I love them so much. I wasn't zoomed in. I don't even know I could see them. Mm. So little moments. Wonderful, though. They're the grassiest little grasses that anybody ever grassed. And, you know, going over the deep colors, I can always come in and get a little white and yellow if I need to even vibrant that up. Just making sure they're wonderful, right? Continue to use the brush. It's an upward stroke. We'll let the road kind of disappear. So what happened there is a little bit fluid and a little bit light. Well, that's okay because I just come through and diffuse it by putting in a few more strokes going a couple different ways. That's all you got to do. And you're just going to come here and sometimes it's good to throw some there out. Remember, grass just does its thing. Plants just do their thing. They're, they're all competing for sunlight. They're all competing for resources, right? So some of them are going to, you know, dodge out from the others, trying to get a bit of light, trying to get a bit of hope. And maybe they've had a chance to grow since the last time the tractor or wagon or whatever comes through here has come through here. So do I think about the stories behind my paintings a lot? Yes. Yes, I do, my friends. Yes, yes, I do. Now, as we go across here, I'm gonna have to keep an, I'm gonna keep a zoom over your left shoulder because this is such a fine detail work that I can't see it over your right shoulder. Okay, so let's do that, and I will stay out of the way. You just let me know if I get in the way of the shot because I want them to see this. It's super fine grass. Now I'm gonna come through the middle. If you need to focus into here, I'm gonna get my brown and green together again. My burnt sienna, my phthalo green. And that's really because this grass over here is a bit darker. It's in the shadow. Well, it's a drier grass. Not that it, it doesn't have any light to it, and we will be bringing light to it, but it is a dry center of the road grass. You know those grasses. I do. They all come from your imagination. <laughs> You know, an observation and, of the world. Well, like, and a huge library of reference, but I mean, you know, yes. it's, but you can say whatever they are. You could say they're flowers by adding little red dots to them. Yeah, you do. You put flowers on them, they're flowers now. That, that will absolutely happen. 
You could say that they're healthy green grasses. Now, I can come into my yellow ochre in this uh, green-yellow mix. And I'll create kind of a dry, lighter green. I try to really vary up what's happening down the center of the road. Still peeking over your left shoulder there. Okay. Uh, let me know if I'm leaning in. I think we're just a little bit. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Perfect. Thank you. So John sometimes has to let me know what y'all's experience is. He is not bossing me. He's being my teammate, my buddy, my friend, making sure that your lessons are coming to you with all the visual information that you need to succeed. Because what you see, you can do. That's why we got zoomy, zoomy cameras. That's why we got zoomy, zoomy cameras. That's so you're not guessing. Term. If you go look them up, you got to find them in the zoomy, zoomy section of the audio video store. I mean, oomy, zoomy, my friends. Oomy, zoomy. Well, that's the team that generally installs everything. <laughs> you can tell when our kids were young, can't you? We got Dora reference, we got Umi Zumi, Candy Bandy. You know exactly what well, was going on, honey. I'm like. just saying, of all the teams, Umi Zumi's got math, geometry. They got it, man. I would say they are the most skilled installers of the group. I don't know, Bob the Builder. Yeah. Can he build it? Bob I, the Builder. I'm yes. Saying, you know, yes, he can, a, John. If I wanted a bridge done, I'd call that guy in. But he has sentient power tools i just don't know if i want him in for delicate tech support issues <laughs> wow we spent a so we're talking about kids cartoons if you're just like i don't get any of these references just paint one don't write me that comment i'm just going to ignore it but two we're going to talk about pop culture <laughs> sometimes ranges. because uh you know uh john has adhd i have add we're pretty neurodivergent as people as it is and sometimes things that are very mellow for other people kind of tune me out. So a lot of times uh, we have a lot of people who, you know, also have that experience here. And, and the talking is part of our process. But guess what? There's a mute button. There's a mute button. My process doesn't have to be your process. <laughs> I haven't signed you up for anything. <laughs> And you know what else there is? What? Closed captioning. Closed captioning. That is so important, though. Like, that's really important. So I'm going to read you and put on some Mozart and maybe download the mini book and just kind of do my own thing. Now I'm going to come here and try to get some little... I have to come back with my grasses. I'm going to try to get some little rough expressions here at the edge. Isn't that nice? It is. I really like this. It's a little hard to learn to do. It's about letting the little brush again. It's it's like sideways grass, but really, it's it's your road is never completely smooth. A uh, little creature. Mm. And so, being able to tell the story of all those interesting parts of the road, right? It's really kind of interesting because you're painting from. The farthest away stuff, closer and closer and closer. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of like this very interesting developing photo <laughs> where it's like the stuff in the distance becomes more clear before the stuff in the foreground does, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool, kind of weird. It's like, whoop, it, you know, like a special CG effect from a high budget Hollywood film that you get right here for free. That you get right here for free. Now I'm going to take a little of my white paint and a little of my ultramarine blue. I don't want it to be blue, so I've like overmixed it there. What I'll do is I'll just pull my brush off and oh, come from is? the side. Yeah, it just got a little too blue. I want it to be off white, but not blue. And what you see me doing is trying to make sure my load, which is right here, is good. I'm going to tap the brush up and down. Try to make sure that I am
Sometimes I'll turn the brush so that it uh, gives me some different little, little moments. Just a little white cosmos. I don't really have any pink in here yet. Sometimes cosmos have a lot of pink. But these really ran heavy in the white, and I thought that was kind of fun. You can always add them in. Right. You can always add some more pink in your cosmo, but it's just sometimes nice when they're unexpected. And again, these are far away. And you're just tapping it up and down. I do try to make sure that I don't have too many patterns. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to put the back here even before I bring these grasses up into it because I know the layering will be powerful. Get a little water on my brush and continue to come forward. Let's come over here. There we go. Sometimes I bring over into like other little kind of areas like little individual blooms have come and And I'll push out paint on the brush and then reload at the toe. This is going pretty well, my friends. Yeah, I think so too. I like the flowers. You'll notice that sometimes I kind of come up above the grasses and let the little flowers float. I like to do that because they do that. I do a thing. It's because I observe them doing that thing and I try to reproduce it in a painting. I think it's because the stems get real thin as mm -hmm. they get to the top of the flower. So it doesn't interfere with light coming down on the rest of the leaves. So that's why they have a tendency to look like they're floating. I'm going to add a little white to my um burn sienna maybe a little i make a light stone here their dandelions do that a lot too do they have a tall stalk but over the flower i mean the flower over the plant they float so sometimes when i'm doing stones it's as important to get some light stones in there is dark that's what this color is which the yellow ochre burnt sienna look had yellow and some white now i just got to find the tune in for it mm. that was a little strong so i just smidged it now i am uh, i don't have an allergy to any of the paints so sometimes i will finger smudge but you know with cadmiums and stuff like that you should be thoughtful and careful and make sure that you're good and safe
So strange how we do. All right, man. It took a minute, but I think we got through. Oh, I love it. I do, too. I love oh it. Oh, my gosh. That is so wonderful. I hope you're loving it, too. I know I tend to go off of, like, I want you to see the painting and not me. Um, not that I have a problem with me. I'm cool with me. I just want you to enjoy the painting and see that. <laughs> there are steps. You guys have to remember that we have things like mini books. On uh, this type of video where it's really close to the release, it's out a week after the video. So if you really need the mini book, it might take as much as seven to ten days, but it will be there free for download. Step-by-step -step infographic, uh, the short video previews where we do a little time lapse. One minute of your time, you can kind of see what you're getting into, right? Yeah. That could be kind of nice. Be like, so check those on the short shelf. That's on your mobile device. You can see those on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram. Or Facebook. I try to make sure they're everywhere. So no matter where you are, you have access to those quick materials. Oh, man. All right. Let's call it step. And we come back, we'll continue to grow and bloom and, and work our little tussies off. Well, our road's looking pretty good. It is. It's just starting to be a thing, man. I'm just kind of getting into it. Uh, you know, we got to keep doing what we're doing. We got to keep doing that good work, that good work in layers. Really, honestly, what stands between most people and a finished painting is perseverance and fatigue, right? So you just got to realize the layers, they happen. You do the steps, you build them up, and you get better out of yourself than you can ever imagine. Really, if you've done Acrylic April this year with me, this is kind of like, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I did, I did 30 days like this. So, you know, you're just going bigger. Yeah. Right, you did last year and this year, you're ready for this painting. You're ready for it. It's the one you need. All right, let's continue on. We need to keep telling the story of the road. The road has a story, John. It does. It does. And the important thing to know about the story of the road, right, and this, the road does have the story, is that, um, you know, as we go here and it comes close to us and we start to see stones and everything more, you know, it's still a pretty involved you know, space. And I, I have to make sure that I um, am pulling detail in more as I go forward. Might even pull some cad yellow into that. So that's the yellow ochre, um, cad yellow and white. Just trying to get that bleached kind of space out. I might even curve some of these upward and then go across. Now, really, this is going to be kind of more here in this kind of a way. But sometimes you've got to get the sides and everything, like where there's enough dirt for the plants to grow over. So I'll encroach the sides a little deeper than the road actually is to make sure that we've got nice dirt to grow everything on. Just pulling a little cad, uh, no, uh, burnt sienna and Mars black. I might kind of pull this back. I'm not sure I have that much grass here. Might pull the grasses back a bit. All right, so we're just going to keep kind of talking about the beginning of the road. A little more dirt, a little more stone here. I think I might even get a little more rust going. And it's okay, like, I might push my brush up and down to be like, hey, this is a, this is a little rough. And it's not the smooth track. Sometimes we use our brush. This is still the number 16 D'Artigny Hog brush by Raphael. Remember that those sizes are not really relevant from brush line to brush line. It only matters for that brush line. Other than that, you want to look at relative sizing, how big it is to my thumb. That's true of any brush. They don't really have a standardized uh, <laughs> method of sizing all of them across all companies. It's just something that we kind of as artists have to deal with. I just roughly come along here and, you know, I'm just shading the sides. Sometimes it feels like we have to have a little perfect brush strokes to accomplish things, but we don't. We don't. It's so amazing how 
how we really, really do not need to have that. I'll just keep working my road. Dirt. It's harder to paint than you think. <laughs> Even, even with dirt even with dirt just... painting dirt <laughs> so this much is... going on here i would say that this is the high art form of playing with dirt you're not just in your backyard anymore if you like these more involved in-depth classes where we really go deep into technique and process and break it down step by step right and they're having fun with these let me know because i'll try to make sure a few of them hit the calendar you know in a month at least and don't worry if you're into like some maybe more entry-level classes i got so many of those so many i'm gonna continue here i'm gonna get my yellow okay oh, yellow ochre my cad yellow oh a little burnt sienna it's weird color and then maybe some white So in, in painting, something to understand, guys, as you're mixing colors, and I know it can be very stressful to do so, value is more important than hue. In other words, the light and darkness of the paint is much more important than the color you're getting. So if you can work hard at seeing how light or dark I'm painting, you can actually, you know, stress a little less about the color mixing. That'll come. The value, that, that we got to work on all the time, you know? I love just getting into this road. I could just be into this road just all the time, you know? It's wonderful stuff. I'm going to rinse out my brush because, you know, we never want to leave these in distress. And I'm going to switch back to the round sister of that brush number eight raphael round and hog i like hog because it gives me some nice rough textures i can play with i'm gonna take a little mars black into my burnt sienna and i'm going to start to paint the beginnings of rocks there's a lot of rocks guys i won't i won't i won't lie to you there's a lot of rocks happening, especially like up close here that we can really see. I might need to get some more burnt sienna onto my palette. So I'll go over to my little paint tray, find some burnt sienna and put it out. I am using Sennelier's Acrylique, uh, which is their professional line. Um, I do think their economy student line, um, it's really not even economy paint. It is not hard on your pocketbook, but it works much better than everybody else's student paint. I would say what it is, is it's like a, what economy pro is what you had said, John. I liked your explanation of it. So yeah, it's, uh, where they, where they, re where they did cost savings was in using modern pigments that don't cost as much but perform very similar to traditional pigments as well as different types of binders and things not so much fillers which a lot of them do a lot right. of the a lot of the other companies hit it with fillers and fillers just make us miserable so what you end up with is is, is a paint it's a much more modern paint first of all you know, it uses a lot of modern technology. So that's one of the things that gives its performance is that it's had years of modern technology to it. Um, and so it performs very much like a traditional pro paint, even though it has a very low cost. So it probably is better to say it's a high tech, low cost option. High tech, low cost option. That's right. And so if you're looking for something a little less expensive than the pro paints, but you don't want to have your experience completely ruined by low quality. Um, their abstract line from Sennelier is the one I recommend. Yeah, it gets, stays peaky and thick. 
and mixes in all the traditional ways that you would expect it to. Now, they're friends of mine. <laughs> But, but I wouldn't tell you guys. I would still like them and eat dinner with them and take them out, even if I didn't like their paint. Um, and I, I just wouldn't talk about it here on the show. And that's the way that we became friends was because we were such fans of the paint. Yeah. So that was, it was like, we were super fans and then got to meet them. And we're like, we really liked his paint. And they were like, we really liked it. We, you really like our paint. Because you would. I mean, like, who would be like, no, we're upset you like our paint. That would be really weird. Ooh, look at our road getting all dusty. <laughs> it looks like some horses have been through here. Some well, there's some there's some shadows because sometimes until you get some shadows in there, you cannot I'm gonna go back into this bright because it's bigger. You cannot get um the stones to look like stones. I'm gonna add a lot more white to this and maybe a little They do look considerably Sienna. darker than stones. Hmm? They look darker than stones. Well, there's the shadows that will be under the stones. They're shadow stones. I'm going to just try to get this. I want some light, but I don't want it to be. I'm going to just try to go back and forth and create a nice little. Hmm. Sometimes it's hard to get that that bleached <laughs> road effect because you got to get bleached road going. So we need a bleached road. We're bleaching it. Yep. If you didn't know, it's getting lots of sunlight. No plants to absorb that energy. It just gets to penetrate to the dirt, grind out all the <laughs> color with its cosmic rays. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not for nothing, but yeah. You know. Now, while this is here, I'm going to take a tighter, more controlled brush. Um, I'll probably grab a round. All right. This is a Isabe Escril round. It's a number four. It's not that far off from the Art Sherpa number four. I'm going to go ahead and mix up my top of the stone color again, which, you know, was the burnt sienna. And I'll little yellow ochre and even some had red and yellow were necessary to get that kind of like oh i'm a stone that's bleached out that's what we're going to do is we're going to add oh yeah i'm going to try to peek over your shoulders okay i'm going to get back because i don't need to be really on it i just need to So those are the rocks, and the other things were just a shadow. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier to get the shadows in to plan where your rocks might go. Yeah. It's just a thing that I sometimes do. Got to paint the farthest thing away first, right? The shadow is definitely under the rock. <laughs> be hard to paint. You don't the got on to. The rock. It's just a strategy. It's just a well, good sure. strategy. But I mean, it would be more complicated to paint. The shadow around the rock than it would be to paint the shadow and then put the rock on the shadow. It does feel like sometimes that is true. I sometimes pick up different colors just to make sure my rocks are, you know, different colors. Tonal. Is that right? Yeah. Or shaded. Well. Tonal. Because you're adding different tones that also affect the shade. Well, toning is adding gray, shading oh. is adding black. Which one's adding and color? Tinting is uh, that's you. Value, you saturation. Tinting. Tinting. There's yet. Yeah, there's tinting strength. So we're just there's different ways we talk about color. We're just. I'm. Sometimes super. some of the words really have a crossover too. It's true, especially when you get to printing. I think that's why sometimes I say the wrong thing and mm -hmm. mean the other thing that I didn't Well, it's didn't not wrong. It's like in what conditions is that true? There's there's always a condition that it is true. I'm trying to just hit the tops of these a little bit. It's just the beginning of this thought. So, hey. Now we've got some little more noticeable pebbles. 
Yeah, I'm coming through with some red. Just telling a, a little pebbly story with my round brush. And then, you know, I can always come back on the round with a with a shadow with a black. Yeah. And just make sure that some of these mm. have some deeper shadows. And guess what? This brush is back. So I'm going to take my grainer and come in and maybe get some red and black going again. All right. I'm going to just lightly touch up some rough ground. It's just rough ground because that's what it is. It's just rough ground. The ground is rough. And all these lines and marks and values help us see the sand and roughness of that ground. I know we're putting a lot of thought into a road. No, it's great. I like the sophistication of your road. Well, I can tell you if you've somebody going through a medical journey in their life and you're looking to paint something for them that helps them feel better, very often roads and bright skies and peaceful scenes like this give them a window to focus on in their space. Oh, oh that's so. nice. I would like it. Yeah, when you paint for hospitals, you try to think about stuff like that, like, you know, the colors and the way that you tell a story, like you wouldn't want to go into a dead end. Yeah. Because you've already got people feeling like they're in a dead end. Like, probably not a good idea to put, like, a stop sign up. No, like, I wouldn't probably put a stop sign up unless it was, like, an intersection. Oh. Like where you could take a road to the right, a road like where it just goes on. Where there were options. Where there were options. Wouldn't put a lot of red in a painting. Uh, that's just because sometimes there's a, a real like association of the color with blood. If I was painting this for a child, I would probably hide some animals in the grasses. I'm just trying to make sure that at no point does my road seem, I don't know, uh, too smooth. It's roady. It's a road, right? We're just trying to. But I think that's the other reason why you don't see these kinds of roads very often. Because they're difficult to drive on? Because pavement is so good. <laughs> pavement works. <laughs> it's so good. It makes the road so nice. Sometimes I'll get another little bright color here. So this was the cad yellow, yellow ochre and a little titanium white. What happens when you put a lot of time and thought into the dirt? That's a Army Corps of Engineers. What I'll tell you is, is that, you know, um, sometimes we see dirt, we see earth like that, and it's actually pretty healing. To me, it is anyways. I'm just wiggling this brush along. Look, making these little rough, irregular little strokes, aren't they? 
Mm. Rinse out. You know, it's super easy to get some grass growing again, right? A little burnt sienna and a little phthalo green. Get some cad yellow going. Give you a little titanium white. Prove the flow. There we go, just making sure we've got nice pops of value. Our little road. Maybe a little green here kind of growing out, right? low and rough to the ground uh, a little more burnt and dried out though than that green let's kind of low grass some of this low grasses my friends low grasses sometimes have to get into the road How's your road feel? All right. That is a good breaking place. We did a lot there. Look at our road. It's amazing. It's a country road, and it's going to take me home to the place I belong. <laughs> you know what? It's... The road is leading right up to that little barn. There's no barn. Look above that painting. No, there's... there's... Look above. Ow! It was like so funny. The road is leading to the barn. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there, are you like this at home with your It could also be leading like, over to the mushroom dude. There's no barn. <laughs> There's no barn. It's, it's rocks. <laughs> I worked really hard to make them look like rocks. <laughs> what do you mean barn? It's, a, it's above it. Oh, my goodness. How silly. All right. Let's have a good laugh. Make sure you're stretching, taking care of your body, breathing in, breathing out. <sighs> Remembering this project is desk steps. You just take your time, process through it, follow along. You've got this. We come back. We're going to continue to add flowers to this amazing scene. So you're still here and you're holding on. You've done the road. You've got to be really proud of yourself. We're going to continue on to the funnest part of the painting, I think, which is, of course, flowers. Right, we did a whole month of flowers, those lessons mostly being under an hour, in all fairness. <laughs> this one being a little bit more. But we're gonna come in here and add some of those flowers. So if you've been like waiting to show off some of those flower skills, you have found the step. I'd also like to let you know I added a little quinacridone magenta to the palette because we'll be adding some pink purple cosmo to the uh to the equation, so to speak. And I'm going to begin to fill in these closer grasses and plants. Um, let's start, I think, with a hog again, because we're kind of familiar with this process, right? So we have the number 16 Raphael Artini hog, and I'm going to get some of my burnt sienna over to my phthalo green and a little bit of my cad yellow into it. And let's make short little strokes kind of Adding into that, you know, maybe I want it to even be darker than this to start out. I'm going to go back into my phthalo and my burnt sea, and I want to build up maybe some of the depth. And I made that decision because as I was painting here, I thought to myself, that's not dark enough. Yeah. As a base. We that's have what to, you thought? That's what I thought. All right. Not dark enough. So let's go back and darken this base. Let's give it a depth, right? We could do black and yellow, absolutely, for a very deep green depth. And we may need to. 
get it to the kind of value that we need to showcase out the flowers that are in the sun. I might even take it there in the corner. So I'm just making sure that this area is a darker green to start with. And that's why I changed my mind here. I was like, it just needs more depth if we're going to see anything else. And sometimes when you're painting, you'll be like, oh, if we're going to get anything else done. Mm. We need to have this, you know, be different in a particular way. Contrast value being often a very important part of what we do and how we do it as artists. Short strokes, they're upward on this bright brush. Little upward strokes. On advanced lessons like this, yeah, tools can matter a little more. More specifics can matter a little more to get those exact results. I'm going to go ahead and do what I talked about before, which is that dark green, the black and yellow. You remember, it makes a very deep green. We forget that it makes a green sometimes, but it does. I'm going to take it to the deepest green. <laughs> Just up here. You know, I definitely want that extra depth and maybe along the base of the plants here. Contrast is important. And we have a lot of bits. They'll go a bunch of different directions and I'm being singular direction at the moment, but that's because we're kind of working a base. Right. Well, I'm going to blend this up here as we kind of go up, working it went into wet. I'm not even worrying about the direction anymore. So back and forth, just softening the edge. I just don't want to have an obvious line in the growth that shows through when I start adding more individual elements. Back into here, the darkest green, which is kind of funny. <laughs> The darkest green knows your name. I don't know. It's just, just a little bit here in the growth, right? In the base. And in the shadows, right? Shadows are yeah. powerful little subject matters in a painting. Maybe I'll move some shadows out to the left a bit. Donna, let me know if I'm getting in the way of the camera. Well, I'm just looking over your right now. Look over your left. I change angles. All right, this is pretty good. I'm going to rinse out. And I think before I move on, I actually really want to dry this. Um, yeah. I'm not working wet into wet in the next uh, aspect of it, so I'm going to want it to be dry. I may even get into one of my more detailed tools for this next part, just because it's going to give me a better result. I've worked really hard to get here. I might as well work really hard the rest of the way, right? So let's try it. We'll come back. This will be like the shortest step of the whole lesson. <laughs> the mini books will be like chapters. And then <laughs> that'll be fine. I'll see you back with it dry. And then I'll show you how to finish that out. So for the next part, we're going to be using a filbert grainer for you at home. If you're looking for this brush, right? Cause you don't want to take a tiny little detail brush and draw a bunch of little lines. It's sometimes called a filbert grainer. Another type is a grass comb. Either will work. Many brush lines have them. You can find them. I've seen them at Joann's. I've seen them at Michael's. I've seen them at the lobby. I've seen them at all of the art stores and you can find them on Amazon. So they are out there. And remember, you can always make your own. I'm going to take my particular grainer, the Filbert Grainer by Princeton Velvet Touch, and I'm going to go ahead and make some lighter green like we were kind of doing earlier, but now we mean it. <laughs> mm. Now now we're like, oh yeah, no, we need the lighter grass. So I do like to get just a little brown into it so it's not cartoonish. And these lines, I'm going to go actually above my greenery line. And the reason for that is, is that, um, you know, plants don't necessarily horticulture themselves. It makes for an interesting, like, oh, there's a little hill here. Well, and they don't just grow in a nice little mowed off 
it's and it's very interesting that like especially up here in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I've noticed that grasses grow in these weird little moundy clumps. Yeah, they really do, don't they? And there's they do some stuff. Like and you're I'm all worried there's a giant ant mound underneath it. Like, there's nope, not. It's just like a mound of grass. There is not. When I come down here, I'll make sure I, I let them wander a couple of different directions, right? Because that's what they do. They are not orderly no. or tiny. They do what they like to do when they want to do it. They're not here to listen to you. They're here to grow and get sunlight and be their best selves and live their best cosmo. These are really cosmo flowers, but they're here to live their best little weed life. <laughs> They're not concerned about you. Sometimes when I'm down at the bottom, what I'll do is I'll grab a little more thalo green or darker value on my brush. This is a subtle sort of, ah, it's still in shadow. See? Yeah. So make sure that it's depth. I can always come back easily with some lighter values and will. But you can see this brush does quick work of a lot of little brush strokes. If you don't have the brush, be ready to do a lot of little brush strokes. I get a little sense. watery. It's sort of irritating to me in my brush. And I do sometimes get a little watery. I'm so glad we're not going. I'm going to the palette so much. I'm actually thinking about how we made that change where we're not switching to the palette and back anymore. Yeah. And I can see... <laughs> Oh, on certain lessons like this one, that could be really challenging. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, so many switches. I'm just kind of working these baselines here. I know I'm going to get brighter as I go up, but why not have fun with some value? Cosmos are often with little uh, grasses and things. I had some friends of mine watch uh, uh, Howl's Moving Castle. Or at the house and had them watch Howl's Moving Castle because nobody paints a meadow like Studio Ghibli. Mm. <laughs> They're like the best of the best of the best. Sir! I don't know why I always go to Men in Black, but I do! Just adding more yellow to it, increasing that value. Uh -huh. But we're also making sure that these lines, see how they're very irregular? I do. And they go way, way above my original green line. And the reason for that is it'll also help us make us flout these, float these flowers more. Mm. Now, again, remember, you can make this brush. You can just get a filbert, take scissors, and go trimmy, trimmy, trimmy. If there is no brush in your area, right? Because sometimes we live in regions that don't have art stores or big box convenience stores. You know, or, you know, maybe your Walmart has art supplies, but they just didn't have this art supply. That's a common thing. Not every, not every place has access to art materials. True. Just buy the filbert that they have and the little scissors and cut away. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> This sort of undergrass here, it's, it's, I'm going short lengths and I'm coming forward. And what that's going to do, if you'll see, step out of the way of my own paint. If you'll see, <laughs> if you'll see, is it's letting it build out in depth. It feels full. If I were to go from long strokes to the bottom to the top, it would make it seem like a flat plane. That's why I'm doing kind of shorter stuff in here. And little clumps and little areas is because we know. And remember, you can even do this one. This is one we forget we can do, which is the black and yellow. Quite bright, actually, isn't it? Mm. Doesn't really matter. The value matters more than anything. So I am going to get back into a hue I like. Hue, color, value, how light and dark. Can always blend in. It never hurts us to have a few like little tonal differences and stuff. I think 
Right. It's like, oh, nature, doing nature. Well, that happens. Now, in a perfect world, yes, I wish this brush was about sized up to an inch. And I probably will make one if I can't find one online. Yeah. I'll make me, I'll get, get take a big Simply Simmons and like cut it all up and make one. We'll make it a short video. <laughs> It'll oh, be yeah. a one minute video. How <laughs> to f make a grass comb out of a filbert you don't like. <laughs> Though I do like the Simply Simmons filbert, so. But that's a catchy title, right? So. It is. Oh, well. <laughs> Sometimes you get to go with the catchy title. Making sure that top is so, so irregular. That's really got a lot going on. Lots of directions, though, don't we? It does. Creating depth. Creating the drama, my friends. So the much. Drama. The total island drama. My kids watched. Huh. They were really into the storylines. <laughs> I was like, you know, they've got a live action of this. Put a bunch of adults on an island and starve them for prize money. <laughs> That's not like gladiatorial Rome at all. <laughs> anyway, shape or form. And turn one of them into a talk show host. I am never ever going to agree with what they say. Because I wasn't into it on the island. But okay. So that's my rambling as I continue to make grass. I don't know if your mind wanders. At this point in a painting my mind often wanders. I always wonder what you're talking about. Because I don't watch these shows. Well only twice. <laughs> you only watch them twice. It's true. And that's if everything goes well. <laughs> if, it, if it goes badly. Sometimes I'll come back and put a little round back in there, right? Put a little of the other grasses back in. Ooh. Maybe it wove back in. It wasn't uh, so clear cut there. You can always do that as well. I'm going to weave some back in. I think we have said as much as we need to say on this step. This step was... Pretty involved. So now, now our field's coming closer to us. They're they're kind of have some value. We need another highlight on top of this, though. So, John, I think we have to pursue on. We're not going to go to a whole another step. I want you to look at it where it is here. We're going to add one more top on top of that. You guys okay. ready? Yeah. They think they're ready. I think so. You guys think you're ready? Okay. You had me all psyched out. I thought you were going to go. Like, all right, I I, I was, and then I was like, man, I'm just going to a highlight step. That's just crazy. So I'm going to add some white into my yellow-green mix here. I'm going to just make sure that some of this has some of those little highlights. It's a little more delicate work here. It is. Because it talks a little bit more of what the shape of everything actually is. Back here, short little, short little lines. Contrast is a powerful thing in mm. life and in your art. Yes, short little line. And you can kind of see I'm arcing them down, aren't I? Taking little areas and maybe telling little stories about this little group's together, right? That's what it makes. It does. Over here with some yellow, maybe a little less white into the green. You can constantly be adjusting this whole range.
making this lower part more uh, scrub brushy. Yeah. Scrub brushy. Scrubby. Scrubby wild and willy. All the little green. Oops. Now it's just, this has a lot of dimensionality to it. It really does. So in here, I can begin to make little more detailed bits. Go the line down and... I'm speaking actually to the cosmos more specifically. Isn't that wild? Look at that happen. So these flowers perhaps are closer to me. I don't want to get too much detail because I know I'm going to put a couple like close, close detailed flowers. But to make that perspective, I've got to start working them here. Ah. I'm just pulling in, zippering this. You could do this with a um, handy brush, but it's really about the zipper. Yes, the grass comb does make it a lot easier. But we're just changing the texture of what we see some. So I can get some just yellow over into some green and making some different. Different little elements there. And then guess what? Back over here. I worry that it's getting too bright. I just spray it with a little bit of the burnt sienna. Shorter brush strokes kind of imply more plants densely packed. That's what we're doing here. As they get longer, they might be closer to us. This over to the right and left. A multi-directional here. Throw grasses into the dirt. Woo! That was quite a lot. We did a lot there. Yeah. I don't know if you guys could see that, but we did a lot there. And now we have kind of the basis to plant a lot of flowers. So I always, I keep stepping off. I know. You're I'm like, like peek, peek. hello, <laughs> see the painting. <laughs> it's such a weird, it's a weird thing, but I do want you to be able to see it because, um, you know, then you can take it in. Though I know we give you two camera angles and the step-by-step -step mini book and all the resources, so you're probably pretty covered. Let's dry that, though, before we go on because I don't want any of the green getting into my flowers. Now we're going to begin the little work of all the little blooms that are going on out in the, the greenery. And it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a tedious kind of step, but hang in because the work is worth it. We're going to be doing mostly white flowers with a pop of pink here and there. And the pop of pink lets us know that it's Cosmo, right? Um, I'm not, I'm going to be editing out the fence because I want to put in focal flowers. 
and I felt like they would pull against each other. Mm. That's just a preferential thing that I'm going to do. You obviously, it's your painting at this point, you're in it. You get to do it how you want to. But I'm going to show you how I would do it if you're painting along with me to learn how. I'm using my number four round from the Art Sherpa line of brushes. Harder and harder to find these days. You know, if you can, it's great. If you can't, I get it. They're hard to come across, right? And I'm going to do my off white again using the blue. I do have white, white, but I want to have a little, I want to have my white be just a little, not the brightest white that ever was. And now my brush strokes. Actually, let me show you something. Let me show you something. All right, here we are. I'll do it in the blue, right? The brush strokes can be a little hard to understand at first. They're little commas. Sometimes connect comma like that. I often counterpose the commas. So I don't know if John can get in here and I'll try to not be so back on the brush. I might comma curved in from that left, coming in through the right, and then maybe across the bottom. I am painting the outer shapes of flowers, not the flowers themselves. It is literally by putting... Um, I'll come in and I'll do it in black. Centers, eventually, that will help us really see them as flowers. So that's that's kind of, you know, what we're trying to do. If you can see those brush strokes, this is what this is all going to be. Sometimes it's just two or three, but that's how we get there. And we do them big and small, and a lot of them through really, we don't get much bigger until we get up here. So it's just a lot, both sides. Some of them are going to be white, some are going to be pink. Let's change our water so the colors are bright. But that's that's what we're up against, my friends. All those. It's a it's a journey. Journey for me, journey for the editing team, all of whom did not know how big this project was going to be. It's a surprise. <laughs> it was a surprise for everybody involved. That's when you see me doing these little strokes, what is she doing? That's what I'm doing. These become bigger the closer they are. Keep in mind that far away, they're pretty solid and dense. Now I do that stuff all pretty fast now. That's why I wanted to show you sort of slowed down what was happening with my brush. Now you've seen it, you're like, oh, look, comma, comma, comma. Comma, 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 comma. Mm -hmm. Comma, 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 we paint a rose. We paint a rose. Yep, that's not happening. <laughs> Little. Little flowers appearing on Little the bit. side. Well, they really show when I come back through and put in centers and dots and stuff. So you go, oh, yeah, they, they do. They have that center. And these are far away, right? So you can see them far away. And they look like faraway flowers. Smaller, further away that they are. You can see that little brush did a lot of work for us, didn't it? <laughs> that's pretty cool. And now we have to do the hard work ourselves. And that's okay. It's okay. We can handle it. By working close to the white, some of my um, flowers are a little cooler with the blue and some will be more white and it'll just make them look like they're in sunlight or not in sunlight. It's a really uh -huh. cool 
I've got to do a lot of technique anyways here. So sometimes these decisions um, shorten or make easy some of my work that I have to do. In a perfect world, you guys would learn the stroke and then we could just fast forward to the end of the clip. <laughs> Maybe someday we're working on it. We're working on doing that where you learn the stroke and we go. But I have to see how you guys learn the stroke. Or I can totally get my... Important thing to remember is these little flowers go above the grass lines, right? They're they're pretty pretty above the grass lines and down into them. In the distance, when brush strokes mold together, it just looks like more flowers that are working together. Just little brush strokes. Doo, doo, doo. Yeah, it's the little commas. Some little decisions. Sometimes a flower is expressed with just one brush stroke. Sometimes it's with multiples. Um, if you did uh, the 30 days of bloom, at this point you're like, yeah, yeah, I see the flowers. <laughs> yeah. You're still a place where you're like, flowers are not my friend. Keep painting them. They'll get there. They will be. And we still got like pinks to take in and it is quiet work. Sometimes I'll get quiet because it's quiet work. Yeah. There you go. They're just, you know, little layers of flowers. wonder hmm. how many bees are out there you know i thought on the up close flowers of like doing bees or flowers, <laughs> and i was just like you know people are tired <laughs> you could be it up though i think so i think you could add butterflies and bees to the thing i really thought about it and i think if we had like a week more to film it i would have done it next one it's the painting that never ends no this is good this is about what you expect to get a painting like this, this is the time it takes you know I mean, but you could just keep going and going. There is there is no reason to stop if you're not tired. If you are tired, you should definitely stop, rest, and start again. Like this would be a tough one to paint live, live. I would watch it live, enjoy the chat, have a social moment, <laughs> and then definitely get into it with the mini book and the... Additional resources yeah like my brain just went because mm. you're making tiny flowers and see how my tiny flower oh they look it's very bloomed isn't it it is i may have bloomed too much who knows <laughs> the woman who bloomed too much i don't know if that's possible i don't know if it's either i think uh flowers are sort of rewarding subjects mm. Sometimes I just do small bits because you're trying to break it up, right? Come up here above everything with more white. Really pop it. I haven't even gone in. Thank you. Oh my goodness. This painting. 
This is so many layers. So many. So many layers. We've done this before. If you like this road in Cosmo Field feel, guess what? There are others. <laughs> you can do this. There's one with the sunset. Apparently I really like this topic. Actually, when I initially looked at it, I thought that they were kind of a white daisy. Um, and then I realized, oh, they're just white Cosmo. So once again, I'm painting Cosmos. Because they're so cosmic. Or something. Again, we won't really see them until I come in and, and center some of the flowers with my little monogram line or my little detail. Such a very long journey. Mm. So long to done. It's okay. And I'm really long. cooking. See, you can, nice thing is you can get a, get a sense of the brush strokes. Yeah. So I've kind of got a full view of your hand there. So. Well, and that's good. Seeing them go down and understanding how this little messy little wiggle wiggle <laughs> turns into brushes is always good for you. And it helps do mirror neuron training. That's right. Well, I'm painting a million of these, John. Would you like to explain mirror neuron training to our folks at home who have not clicked away? Oh, The okay. brave champions that they are at this point in the painting. It's super simple. Like, when you were a little, 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 little baby, you could only learn by watching things. And so this has a whole set of, like, special neurons in your brain that are called mirror neurons. And, you know, I'm oversimplifying this. Like, there's this entire science behind this. So this is like dinner conversation level explanation. Um, dinner conversation with John anyways. Yeah. So these mirror neurons, um, they learn from watching. So when you watch people do something, your brain goes, oh, I'm learning. I'm doing that in my brain. I'm creating a simulation of me doing that same thing. And that helps create it so that later on you can go do that yourself. And as you become a bigger and bigger human, you will have more capacity to make those same movements and do those same things that your brain watched and mirrored. Kind of cool. It is. And it also let me paint a lot, bunch of little flowers in a very meditative state. Thank you. And golfers are well known for doing this. Like you'll find these golfer tapes which is just some golfer in a ball standing there swinging a club. Well, we've learned a lot about that because our latest retreat was at the world's first golf course. Well, America's oh, first America's golf course. First. America's first golf course, not the world's. Ugh. I don't know. I don't know golf. We don't want to get into the golf disputes no, I, I, of origin. I, no, it's, I think it's Scotland, isn't it? I, I, I think so too, but I'm, you know, there's always, Dude, a, there's like, always an usurper saying, no, we did it first. I'm just not up to the. Not my field, the golf, the forensic and history of golf. Who hit the ball with a stick first and called it a game? Uh, well, that's way long ago. So, origins of golf, what are you going to do? But I think that our modern interpretation did come from Scotland. But yeah. I'm not super. You're, you're not taking it away from as, uh, any Aztec people or mm -hmm. probably hit a ball. There's so, you know. Who knows? You can see I'm just making them bigger as I come forward. Seems like a very human thing to do. Yes, I can hit this ball with this stick farther than you can. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, I can get it into that hole that's way out there. Oh, yeah? Well, I can do it with one swing. Oh, yeah? I can paint that golf course and really upset all the golfers by not putting the flag in the right place, as my mom did once. 
<laughs> my mom did this really gorgeous painting of a golf course, and she just put the flags where she thought that they would look nice. And people were like, how do you play that hole? <laughs> <laughs> and, and she couldn't sell the painting till she moved the flag to where they thought they could play the hole in their imaginary golf course. Do, do, do. <laughs> it was so funny. So many people, too. How do I don't understand how to play that hole? And we had no idea that you could put a flag that would be that confounding into a painting. I'm still not sure how you do it. I was like, you should have just renamed it the Impossible Hole, and then everybody would have been completely fine with it. And only golfers would have gotten it. Right, then I'm like, oh, yeah, that is an impossible hole. You can't play the hole. Oh, it is like a metaphor for life. <laughs> and it was all meaningful, but no. Move the flags. Which did make people very happy. That is often why some, you know, one paints. Great joy. Not the only reason, but a reason. And people paint to, to you know, upset joy. So, it's all good. <laughs> kind of coming in here and just... And just making sure it feels like a very solid. Oh my goodness, you guys like I have painted all the flowers and I've done it here for hours on this road that goes to nowhere in my life. I have painted all the flowers and I'm sitting here for hours on this road that goes to nowhere in my life. I mean, I cut yourself. Stand the heart of country now. <sighs> oh, feel free to ri finish writing the song and printing it up and s putting it in a group. You guys are so much more creative than I am. That'll be funny. We had, uh, I don't know where it went, had the paper here somewhere. Cheer wrote, written for uh, the retreat because my mom and I would come raid each other's rooms with like different cheers and chants and things. <laughs> And it was very funny and fun and fun. You guys had, did have a lot of fun. We did have a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, just did nothing but eat and sleep and paint. Kind of like right now that you're doing with me going, I just, I, you know, I clicked the thumbnail. It was pretty. I thought, oh, this would be nice on my wall. And this lady teaches beginners how to paint. And I've been here for 10 days. Help me. Help me. Da, 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 da. Yes, some of my classes are 30 minutes. Some of them are traps. Do you know how many times I had to watch the Cosmo fill-in section? Because I had to fill in the Cosmo, Cosmo section and couldn't move on. You? I'm one of our watchers. Oh, you're one of our watchers. Oh, yeah. I am. I'm a, a metaphor. Oh, I am a watcher. I'm not painting. A little bigger down here. Brush strokes are a little stronger. This is just so I can justify the big flowers. Why am I still doing the big flowers, John? Uh, because I planned it all along and the whole painting is designed around it, I guess, is what's happening. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Put a little more white. Add it to the petals. All right, let's call that a step because that was a lot. If you can get to here, you're already a winner. <laughs> you could probably sign it, hang it, nobody would know. <laughs> but we're going to continue on. I'm going to dry it so you can come back through some with some pinks and some centers. Thank you for being here. If you're still here, throw it down in the comments and be like, I'm still here. I'm still going. If you need encouragement, it does this part of the painting. You're like, you're in it. You're like, I don't know. I can just throw it down in the comments. We'll see it. We'll encourage you. All right. Come back another step. So I want to go through and put in a smattering of pink flowers and also some centers to the whites. Highlight the whites uh, if I need to, to just give them some dimensionality. 
how that's going to be done is I'm going to come back in. I'm going to go with initially a number one liner, script liner, monogram liner. Any of them is fine. I'm going to just get some, get a little black. I think that contrast is going to be super wonderful. And just dot some of the centers. Dots are small, but because they're high contrast, they'll really read is what they are. They don't all have to be dotted, but you want a lot of them to have dots. Which is dot through. And just over here as well, some places. Because they're farther away, they have to be smaller dots. Closer they have to, they can be bigger. Sometimes I will rinse out and reload just because, you know, the paint can dry on your brush some. Hard to stand back from the canvas while dotting, but sometimes I have to for filming. You're okay. I've got a couple angles on you. No. We all know what a dot looks like. I mean, do ya? Do ya? I don't know. All right. So that's sort of general dotting, which gives us the sense that these are a little more flowers. It's just another visual cue. We have that in. I'm going to go back to my number four round. Get it wet, pull out some pink, and I'll just go ahead and mix it over here towards where the white was. It can even get a little of the altering blue into it to kind of purple it a bit, as it do. Mix it in. There you go. So it's got some ranges there. Some white. And let's go. Well, maybe pinker than this. Oh. It's just a few places, like there's just some pink. This is mostly a white Cosmo little blooming place. There are some pink ones. I'm just going to smatter them around. Dog herd. Usually you see it the opposite way. A few whites and then a lot of pinks. So this is kind of an interesting flip of the script. I'm 
Uh oh. We may have to like let them go somewhere. They're, they're playing. They're at full play mode. They're run, 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 run. They're at full play, 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 man, play. guys. I don't know what to tell you. They're at full play. I'm not sure it's... how much that how much of that they can hear. Yeah. I don't Probably either. More. Just the top growls of twigs. Just the top growls. You can hear the top growls. You may be able to hear it all. Growl, 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 growl. Twix is a very loud play. She is. Spider, you just think it's on and it's not on. All I can tell you is it's not on. She does this with an empty rug, too. Telling people what, telling, telling short. She's just very vocal. All right. (laughs) That's all we've got to do there anyways. New audience, so it's just a little pops of pink and everything. Let's give this a pause. We'll come back, clear the dogs out, and go to the next step. So I want to come back through with a detail brush and pop a couple of things um, just to make sure that these distant flowers are still stars or superstars within the painting. I'm going to go back into my... One number one liner, Princeton liner, and I'm going to grab some pink. Sometimes I like to get it with a little yellow, so it just is a little more warm and saturated. And it pops a little bit. We'll load up and add some focal pops oh. so that the pink doesn't just disappear into the flowers. Otherwise, they just tend to vanish away and cause more anything but vanishing flowers. They really just don't. Those little pink moments will definitely give you a better, a better outcome. the flowers that you are showcasing. Like maybe like a little grouping of pinks back there. Mm. You want to resist the temptation of changing scale. I'm going to rinse out. Grab a little yellow, perhaps, on the tip. And I'll center some of them with yellow. Not all of them, but just enough that we're like, oh, we can really see those little guys out there. Yeah. Another nice little touch that you can do, I'm going to load up some pure white. You could do this with fluid if you wanted. I'm just going to make sure that some of my flowers have some white petals. Oh, yeah. And this really shows up because we went to the trouble of doing them in that uh, kind of off-white range so that there was room to highlight some of them. We're just sort of saying, oh, some light got onto those. They're popping just a little bit more. There they are. I'll just come through here and just find little bits of flowers. Maybe exaggerate. I don't I want to avoid getting too detail oriented because you know I'm still trying to make them not my most like focused flowers that I have. Mm-hmm. 
but farther away flower. Now here where they're a little more defined, we could be a little bigger on them. And perhaps a little more thoughtful in how they are shaped. Got a little pink there. That was unintentional, but I rather like it. Oh, yeah. And that'll happen sometimes. Sometimes you'll be going along and you're like, oh, I got a little got a little moment there I didn't expect. And So you can see that just adds... A lot. Moments. Yeah. With something. It's a nice little touch to do. Woo! This has been such a long art journey. And I was going to tack on another hour <laughs> <laughs> with some big flowers up front. But when I looked at it, when I kind of worked it out in chalk, it just wasn't going. It didn't work. And uh, that will happen sometimes where you have an idea of something you're going to do with a painting, but then in actuality, it doesn't quite play. And you can see I like me some big flowers behind me. But it just wasn't working for the framing of this particular one. So I realized for your enjoyment and my enjoyment, we should stop here. <laughs> and we're going to, I'm going to sign it. And then uh, <laughs> I'm going to sign it. So let's sign it, right, John? All right. Let's give this a little signature. I'm going to come over here. And I think I'm going to get into my, um, like, a little white and uh, perhaps yellow. So it's sort of a light beigey sand color, but lighter than what we've done elsewhere. I want it to show but not be so... So, oh, this is always so challenging to do. Because I like to rest my hand for a signature. Oh, yeah. But I got through it. Woo, it's it. signed. <laughs> okay, so we signed it. We've marked it as done. <laughs> and I just think that's just going to make myself happier and you happier. And you've got to make decisions within a painting that leave you happy. Because this isn't supposed to be... Uh, stressful and frustrating <laughs> so that's the goal listen this was big i hope you enjoyed this deeper dive into techniques and color mixes and concepts uh we'll be coming back with uh, obviously some shorter videos that are not quite as involved and then i'll come back with some more involved videos as well i hope you like some of the new things we added in like demoing brush strokes and grass and everything tell us what you thought of this lesson if you're still here Definitely want your feedback because you're exactly who I'm teaching for. Leave the feedback in the comments below. And I do read that. I read that uh, currently when the video releases. And I, I read it years from now because luckily YouTube lets me see uh, comments from older videos that are newly posted as well as new video comments. What do you think, John? I think so. You think they were brave? I love it. I love the road. I, I love the road too. We're all on a journey, aren't we? This will be our metaphorical journey. Guys, be good to yourselves. Seriously, be good to each other. Be kind out there. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye.